Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Hey, hey you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Welcome to Freddy's. How are you guys doing? Meetings. Lunch meetings all week. All salads. Bean salads. Quinoa salads. Heirloom salads. Frisee salads. Sometimes a guy needs a Freddy's original double, Chicago dog, and a turtle sundae. Make that two, please. Three. Absolutely. If it's going to be bad, it better be good. Being bad never tasted this good. Freddy's, the experience that puts a smile on your face and the taste that brings you back. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. fans and welcome to the Crown Coliseum in Fayetteville, North Carolina as tonight the Carolina Reapers make their SPHL debut taking on the Birmingham Bulls. For those of you who may be wondering, no, this isn't a brand new rebrand. This isn't going to stick around forever, although you may see it recurring throughout SPHL years to come. But it is the Fayetteville Marksmen, their roster at least, in new colors, a new logo, and certainly a very fun new atmosphere that's going to be a blast to be a part of both on the Reapers Radio Network and Hockey TV as well as here in person. I'm Drew Blevins. I'll be alongside with you for this one. Last night, these two teams duked it out in a legendary contest that saw both squads go tit for tat, but ultimately a pair of power play goals in the third period for the marksmen score them to victory. Let's take things over to tonight as the Carolina Reapers will skate out onto the ice here in about 15 minutes. The Reapers are a team that really need to find a way to be more consistent in their hockey, and head coach Corey Melkert made no bones about it yesterday in his pregame comments. Getting to the Reapers' style of hockey is going to be critical, especially in the early going, and they cannot have wheels fall off the wagon moments. Ultimately, that's been the key to this group's undoing throughout the course of the season. When the Reapers don't score on the pass, Power play, they struggle to win hockey games. When the Reapers aren't consistently killing penalties, they struggle to win hockey games. But more importantly, when the Reapers aren't able to play their style, which is not the fastest in the world, it's methodical, detailed, setup oriented hockey, the Reapers struggle when they get into an up and down style of game. Birmingham isn't going to be a team that's going to want to rush up and down the ice, and though they do have some speedsters, primarily their rookie phenom Carson Rose, it's a group that wants to bump and bang and play physical and then try to run and gun. It's almost one of those things, when you watch Birmingham play, you see the strategy come to life. But this late in the season, a team that is desperate to find victory is struggling with their playoff hopes on life support. 
We'll step aside for these messages from our corporate partners. Coming back, we'll preview the Bulls as they line up against the Carolina Reapers. This is Reapers Hockey. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Hey, hey you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Welcome to Freddy's. How are you guys doing? Meetings. Lunch meetings all week. All salads. Bean salads. Quinoa salads. Heirloom salads. Frisee salads. Sometimes a guy needs a Freddy's original double, Chicago dog, and a turtle sundae. Make that two, please. Three. Absolutely. If it's going to be bad, it better be good. Being bad never tasted this good. Freddy's, the experience that puts a smile on your face and the taste that brings you back. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light and to Greg's house because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. We welcome you back to the Crown Coliseum in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Drew Blevins alongside you on the Red Pepper pregame show as the Carolina Reapers prepare to take on the Birmingham Bulls. It'll be the seventh and final meeting between these two teams this season. Let's dive into the way the Birmingham Bulls line up this evening. This was a strong push from a Birmingham group that is desperate to find points however they can dig them out. It hasn't come easily, but ever since adding Kevin Kerr as the assistant coach, there's been organization in the strategy and there's been effectiveness both on the offensive side of the puck and the defensive side of the puck. Hayden Stewart, I thought, played a tremendous hockey game last night and it'll be one to remember undoubtedly but I think what was more impressive is the fact that Birmingham came out and they threw the first punch and they hung in for the majority of the hockey game fact of the matter is that Birmingham's a more disciplined team throughout the third period the marks or excuse that well yesterday yes the marksmen find themselves in a position that they're not going to have the opportunities to score the game-tying and game-winning goals. And ultimately, Birmingham, by taking those two penalties, gave the marksman opportunity to win, and they did. Fast forward to tonight. No roster changes of note for Birmingham as they line up against the Carolina Reapers. The Bulls are keeping their starting goaltender close to their chest. We'll pass it along to you when we get it. I thought Hayden Stewart was really good last night for Birmingham. Austin Lotz is waiting in the wings. What's the difference between those two? Well, for Hayden Stewart, a 3.06 goals against average and a 9.11 save percentage. Meanwhile, for Lotz, a 3.39 goals against average and a 9.06 save percentage. So you're looking at guys that are Pretty much tit for tat with each other in the goaltending department. Both guys are going to give Birmingham a chance to win this contest. Let's look at some of the other major players. Captain Mike Davis will always be the straw that stirs the drink 
for this Birmingham group. But you also have to keep a close eye on Carson Rose, who is on a tear in his rookie season. 19 goals so far. He scored last night to tie the hockey game at two midway through the second period. And I also think Scotty Donahue has been a really nice addition to this forward core. Donahue is a hard-nosed forward who slogged it out halfway through the season in the Federal League before being called up in early December from the Carolina Thunderbirds. Donahue was well-loved in Carolina, and many Thunderbirds fans thought he was only going to be loaned for a weekend, but Craig Simchuk has fallen in love with Birmingham's number seven. Donahue remains on the roster. It's defensively where Birmingham struggles, though. There has not been a tremendous amount of consistency for the Bulls when it comes to who's playing on the blue line. In fact, they've turned over 67% of their defensemen since the last time these two teams faced off in January. Noah Holm and Troy Button are an interesting pairing. They're two of the newer defensemen for this Birmingham group. I thought they were effective yesterday, but they're going to need to find a way to be a little bit sharper moving the puck. And Aaron Huffnagel also trying to get his engine going. He opened the scoring for us last night. Folks, we're going to pause. Coming back on the other side, we'll tell you about the Carolina Reapers. Couple of roster changes of note. This will be a fun one on the Reapers Radio Network. Marquee. Carolina's Dentists offers the best in oral care and technology. Hope you're brushing twice a day like we discussed. And don't forget to make that six-month appointment, okay? We'd like to keep those pretty white teeth looking good for you. Come experience positively different dentistry at Carolina's Dentist, the official dentist of the Fayetteville Marksman. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. Cockroaches and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce. Because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Hey. Hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Welcome to Freddy's. How are you guys doing? Meetings. Lunch meetings all week. All salads. Bean salads. Quinoa salads. Heirloom salads. Frisee salads. Sometimes a guy needs a Freddy's original double, Chicago dog, and a turtle sundae. Make that two, please. Three. Absolutely. If it's going to be bad, it better be good. Being bad never tasted this good. Freddy's, the experience that puts a smile on your face and the taste that brings you back. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light and to Greg's house because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. 
Welcome back to the Red Pepper pregame show. Drew Blevins alongside you on the Reapers radio network as well as Hockey TV. Delighted to have you with us for what promises to be a fun contest between two teams that are writing very different narratives this season. As we told you in last night's contest, the Birmingham Bulls need wins because they're just trying to push the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs out of that eighth and final playoff spot. With the Fayetteville Marksman win last night, the Evansville Thunderbolts have clinched the seventh playoff spot in the league, which means there's only one more left up for grabs. The Birmingham Bulls are fighting for it with the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs. Birmingham needs a win tonight, and they need Roanoke to lose as the Rail Yard Dogs are only four points away from being able to clinch that final playoff spot as we're inside 10 games remaining in the SPHL season. Let's take a look at the Carolina Reapers and how they'll line up this evening. One roster change of note, and I think this is an important one based on how important uh, this player has been. Zach Hoffman will be out of the lineup here this evening. And kind of the word and the feeling had been he was not feeling well yesterday physically. He's out of the lineup tonight, more maintenance than anything. Mark Wilson activated off the injured reserve list. He'll cue in into Hoffman's spot. And it will be Brent Moran getting the start in net tonight for the Carolina Reapers. Moran has 13 wins on the season and 16 starts. He's been absolutely fantastic. And you're looking forward to seeing what Moran can do tonight because he hasn't had the opportunity to face off against the Birmingham Bulls yet. And while I thought Jason Pulaski was good yesterday, Brent Moran seems to have another level that he's able to get to. And Corey Melkert made no bones about it. Quite plainly and simply, he said Brent Moran is going to be his guy, and he's going to be his guy until proven otherwise. And I think that's an important thing to keep a sharp eye on because it's always important to know who your goaltender is going to be. And right now, Moran is rock steady for this Carolina Reaper group. At the forward positions, Taylor Best and Tommy Biesinger have been big, but of course the major news is Shane Bednard remains out of the lineup on the 21-day IR where he was placed yesterday at 5 p.m. Lower body concern for Bednard. Prognosis is better today than what we thought yesterday as he's only gone on to the 21-day IR, so there is still a fading hope that he's going to be back in time for playoffs. Keep an eye on that. Corey Melkert has complimented his number 22 as being the top line center and somebody who's really the heartbeat of this Carolina Reaper team. And I think for Melkert, that's where it stings to lose Bednard. Birmingham did a fantastic job in the faceoff circle yesterday because there was no top line center to be able to steer pucks away. Keep a sharp eye on whether Tommy Biesinger goes back into the faceoff circle or whether it's going to be split duty between Taylor McCloy and Matt McNair taking those draws here this evening. Birmingham benefited from a couple of strong scoring chances early and late in the hockey game yesterday because they were winning draws. Let's step aside one more time on the Red Pepper pregame show. We'll be right back to give you our keys to victory. This is Reapers Hockey. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Hey, hey you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Welcome to Freddy's. How are you guys doing? Meetings. Lunch meetings all week. All salads. Bean salads. Quinoa salads. Heirloom salads. Frisee salads. Sometimes a guy needs a Freddy's original double, Chicago dog, and a turtle sundae. Make that two, please. Three. Absolutely. If it's gonna be bad, it better be good. Being bad never tasted this good. Freddy's, the experience that puts a smile on your face and the taste that brings you back. 
Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Hey, it's Goldie from the Morning some, Fayetteville for St. Peter Pest Control. They've been doing my pest control services all summer, and it's been us, wonderful not to have to deal with ants and mosquitoes the, the last few months. All that money I saved in calamine lotion. Ray and Preston St. Peter show up, they spray outside, but they also do in-home pest control. So if you have roaches or, dare I say, rodents, they'll take care of them as well, because the last thing you need is unwanted visitors back, making a nest like in your legends. Christmas decorations up in the attic. Call St. Peter Pest Control. They send all your bugs and pests to see St. Peter. Marky. Carolina's Dentist offers the best in oral care and technology. Hope you're brushing twice a day like we discussed. And don't forget to make that six-month appointment, okay? We'd like to keep those pretty white teeth looking good for you. Come experience positively different dentistry at Carolina's Dentist, the official dentist of the Fayetteville Marksman. Welcome back to Fayetteville, North Carolina on the Red Pepper pregame show. Drew Blevins alongside you as the Carolina Reapers are being introduced prior to their meeting with the Birmingham Bulls tonight. This is going to be a big one. Let's go ahead and turn our attention to tonight's keys to victory. We'll start things off with the visiting Birmingham Bulls. It's a Birmingham group that needs to find a way to win this hockey game. Every game they play from here to the end of the season is the most important one that they'll have this year. I think one of the keys remains the same. Come out, have the first punch, don't back down early. If this is a Birmingham team that can find a way to get their momentum, get their feet under them in the early going of this hockey game, they proved last night they're going to be able to stick around with Fayetteville throughout the entirety of the contest. The other key for Birmingham is stay out of the penalty box. The Fayetteville Marksmen went two for two on the power play last night. The Carolina Reapers are operating at 19.5% on the power play this year. They've had market success against Birmingham throughout the season all year long. For the Reapers, it's two very simple keys. Number one, hit back. You cannot have wheels fall off the wagon moments. Things cannot go sideways at all during this game. The other thing for the Reapers is you have to find a way to keep Birmingham out of the slot. That's where the Bulls create a lot of their chances. You cannot allow Mike Davis or Carson Rose to be in a position where they can create trouble right in front of your net. Folks, that'll do it for us on the Red Pepper pregame show. The Carolina Reapers and the Birmingham Bulls drop the puck next. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Hey. Hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Welcome to Freddy's. How are you guys doing? Meetings. Lunch meetings all week. All salads. Bean salads. Quinoa salads. Heirloom salads. Frisee salads. Sometimes a guy needs a Freddy's original double, Chicago dog, and a turtle sundae. Make that two, please. Three. Absolutely. If it's going to be bad, it better be good. Being bad never tasted this good. Freddy's, the experience that puts a smile on your face and the taste that brings you back. 
Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy-duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. fans and welcome to the Crown Coliseum in Fayetteville, North Carolina. This is the Reaper Radio Network and I'm Drew Blevins. I'll be alongside with you for this one. The Carolina Reapers taking on the Birmingham Bulls for the final time this regular season as the Fayetteville Marksman rebrand for one night only. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this one from the All-American City as we're away for the first time in history with Carolina Reapers hockey. To the far side boards in the Reaper's end. It'll be taken by Drake Lover. He backhands in front and a good stop made early by Austin Lotz on Taylor McCloy, who was working in the slot. Bulls get to the puck and send it to the far side wing. A headman pass intended for Davis. Rolls instead off the stick of Miles Harvey as Davis will have to settle to dump it into the Reaper's zone. Backhanded into the near side corner. It'll be peeled away here. And Glover will feed it to the far side wing. He was looking for Fraze. The pass was tipped by David Nippert, who will go chasing behind a Brent Moran for this puck. Nippert in the near side corner. He's hogtied by two Reapers defensemen as the Reapers will work it to the near boards. Sam Storm, the former Reaper, rips it into the far side corner where Carolina will get to it first. Matt McNair backhands it into the far side corner. And we'll have the game's first line change as the Reapers will bring out their top unit of Biesinger, Best, and Brian Moore. On the far side half wall, this is Biesinger who will take the puck as he tries to war ahead at the far side wing. Intercepted by Birmingham at the red line, and they'll dump it into the near side corner. Taken here by Aaron Huffnagel. He's bumped in the goaltender's trapezoid, knocking the puck free to Brian Moore, and the Charlotte native will feed it to Biesinger. Headman pass for Taylor McCloy, who cuts up ice. McCloy will feed it to the cutting wing. Here's Best with a low wrist shot, pushed it wide to the near goal post as he challenges lots here early. This puck's taken directly back behind the net. A rolling puck will squirt all the way back to the opposite end. Harrison Harper will pick up the puck here for Carolina. As he stands directly in back of Brent Moran with 8.15 to go in this first period. We remain scoreless between the Reapers and the Birmingham Bulls. Moore gets tied up with his old man. That was best as this puck squirts right to Taylor Best. And here he comes, Best. Feeds it to the far side wing as it'll be driven in by Don Oliveri who hops up into the rush. On the near side boards, this will be peeled up ice by Brian Moore who will hold at the blue line. He backhands to Jarrett Cup, who will feed it in deep. Cup going to chase his own clear and attempt at the near side corner. Birmingham's got it as this will make its way right to McTavish who comes down the near side boards. McTavish with a long wrist shot, punched out by Brent Moran as Taylor Best gets to it, feeds it off the far glass. The line's held here by Colton Bates. He fires a quick snap wrister just wide of the far post. Reapers struggling to get this puck out, and this is where they got trapped yesterday. They will, but only to the red line as Mike Davis will find Bates. Colton Bates works around of his number opposite, who is Reamers. Reamers wars to find the puck. He's got it down the far side wing. He goes, cross ice pass for Barrow. He fires, he scores! Tyler Barrow with his first professional goal opens the scoring for the Reapers, and it's 1-0. Just as soon as it looked like Carolina was going to get trapped in their own end, Tyler Barrow out of Wilkes University will have his first professional point. It's a goal through the legs of Austin Lotz, and Carolina's off and running early. 
Time of the goal will be 2.49 into the first period. And the Carolina Reapers have a goal from their newest member. This will be skated ahead by Troy Button for Birmingham as he'll dump it into the near side corner. Mark Wilson goes to get it for Carolina in his first shift back. Zach Reamers will have the assist on a beautiful feed and always encouraging to see Reamers hop up and into the scoring. He's been a quietly consistent player. And for Tyler Barrow, a rewarding evening to have the goal wearing that Wilkes University blue that he sported for four years with the Colonels. This will be dumped into the far side corner where FX Girard will bang bodies for the puck. Finds Glover, who scored two last night for Carolina in the far side corner. Birmingham will get to it directly in back of their goal. Line held here by Harrison Harper. A low wrist shot off the end wall. He, along with Miles Harvey, who's only played three games now for the Reapers, four games, excuse me, the only two held without goals this season. A chance low for Martin, but he pushed it wide as he got handcuffed from behind by Don Oliveri. In the far side corner, Harper knocks Jordan Martin. That'll loose the puck up. So it'll be dumped in here by a Tanner Fraze to the far side corner. 15.35 to go in the first period. Reapers one, Bulls nothing. Up the near side boards, this will be backhanded out to the far wing, is driving in here is Taylor Best. Best drops it back to the point for Andrew Lane, but he'll have to settle for dumping it in as the puck had come across the blue line on the far side boards. Birmingham trying to possess here, Storman overtaken by Best as this puck is free. Swung back to the point, but Lane holds the line for Carolina. His wrist shot is off of Austin Lotz, and will have to be corralled by Brody Duncan, who will clear it to center, but right to Brian Moore for the Reapers. Moore gives the puck away as he runs hard into Carson Rose, the rookie. That's a welcome to the SPHL hit, even though Moore held up at the last second. Here's Brian Moore challenging Storman, who will have to turn to his defense partner as Birmingham will break it out on the near side. A headman look is bringing the puck into the attacking zone as Huffnagel tries to fire a forehand wrist shot as he got tied up from behind him on a good play from Taylor Best, who has really developed on the defensive side of his game. He had a couple of strong back-checking plays last night in the 4-3 win. This is turned over at the blue line, a two-on-two. -two. Barrow zipped it across as he was looking for Beesinger. It goes off of a Birmingham stick and right back out to center. Peeled away is bringing the puck forward is Reamers. To Candles one too many times, but he's got Barrow in the near side corner. Fed all the way across as Tommy Beesinger's got it. Deeks around his man and will hold back behind the net. Beesinger takes a couple of slashes, surviving them as good challenge from Scotty Donahue. Knocks the puck free, but right to Zach Reamers. Loses his footing in the near corner. Has help from Barrow, who found Beesinger for a moment, but Birmingham will survive back beyond the red line as Martin will knock it around of Miles Harvey. That'll send Mark Wilson to grab possession. Wilson looking up ice, slides around Carson Rose, and the defenseman will feed it in. Wilson back off the IR, was activated officially at 5 p.m. today, and as we told you during the Red Pepper pregame show, that's for Zach Hoffman, who's out with an illness. This is a backhand shot on net by Carson Rose, stopped and held onto by Brent Moran, and that'll bring us to our first break. 13-27 to go in the first period. Tyler Barrow opens the scoring for the Reapers. It's 1-0 Carolina. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Welcome back to Fayetteville, North Carolina. Drew Blevins alongside you on the Reapers radio network. It's the Carolina Reapers on a goal from Tyler Barrow. Open the scoring here in Fayetteville. I think that's a big goal for Barrow. And it's always important to see your young players make immediate contributions 
because you want them to have the confidence to keep working forward and making plays. And for Barrow, that's a big goal. Opens the scoring here. And I think it'll be fun to watch how he develops through the rest of this season. Signed to a standard player contract earlier this week. Here's a challenge that goes right over top of the crossbar as the Reapers will get to the puck in the far side corner. They'll hold the line on the far boards as Fraze was crunched in the back play. Brought ahead here by Colton Bates who will lay it into the near side corner. Mark Wilson behind a Brent Moran to chase down this puck. Wilson playing alongside Miles Harvey. There's a height difference of nine inches between those two officially. Harvey skates directly behind of Brent Moran, who will provide a small screen as the Reapers look to set things up from their own zone. Push to the near side boards for Wilson. Found best, but off of his backhand too strong. Birmingham dumps it right back in. Wilson will retreat behind Moran, circling to the far boards to grab it. Fires a cross ice pass to the near red line. Moore, one touches ahead for Taylor McCloy. McCloy will drop it for Brian Moore as Moore has struggled to find the normal scoring touch. He's still been able to produce points, but here he turns it over. It's Papalardo off to the races. Moore back with a clean stick check to take it away. And that's where Brian Moore's natural skill set is so much stronger than 85% of the rest of the SPHL. That's a turnover that's a breakaway in every league across North America. 90% of the time is losing his footing and offside is McCloy, but Brian Moore with the bad pass, back checks and hustles, and that's a strong defensive play. Gave an opportunity, but recovered on the mistake. Jason Binkley, the assistant coach for the Carolina Reapers, has a fantastic quote about the game of hockey. He says, it's a game of mistakes, and then he always pauses and goes, but more specifically, it's a game about how you handle your mistakes who makes fewer of them, and who makes fewer mistakes that are costly. This is Andrew Lane for the Reapers, finds Barrow, who will be forced to drop it back to the defenseman, Lane, and he'll dump it in. Up the near side boards, this puck will be scooped ahead by McTavish as he finds Jordan Martin, Jarrett Cup all over him, takedown will keep going as Donahue fires a shot that Jarrett Cup Back checked and got in the way of. Now Tommy Biesinger's off with it, bumped by Mike Davis as he fed it ahead for Reamers. Reamers is tripped up on the play. We'll keep going as he works in the far side corner to dig this puck free. Reamers hanging on to it as he skates up the near boards to the blue line. Drops it off there for Wilson, who fires a pass into the far side corner as he was looking for Brian Moore. This will be skated ahead by the Bulls, who will break it out right up Broadway. Colton Bates. Trying to get some help from Davis, who stays on sides by doing the splits. Now Sam Storman with a challenging wrist shot. He scores! Sam Storman beats Brent Moran under the blocker's side arm, and Carolina gives one back. Halfway through the first period, it's 1-1, and Sam Storman has his second goal in his former home in his many nights. Storman only had 10 points in 34 games in his time in Fayetteville. But on his only return trip this year, he scored twice. Had a go-ahead goal last night, what would have been a game winner. And now he's got the game-tying goal midway through this first period. 10-16 to go in it, 1-1. And that's one Brent Moran would love to have back, just plainly because of the reason that's a puck that gets through him. And being a large body netminder, that doesn't happen often. Moran has always been able to respond. He's someone who plays with a high level of emotion as this shot from Huffnagel goes off the inboards wide. Picked up by Birmingham on the far side half wall. Dave Nippard will hold it in, but he does right to Don Oliveri, who's recently had a red-hot streak with his offensive play. Troy Button will backhand to home, who will feed it all the way up ice. This will just be backhanded into the attacking in by Aaron Huffnagel. Oliveri back for Carolina to pick it up. He'll send it to the near boards as Tanner Frey skates it ahead to Matt McNair. 
McNair driving into the near corner. Drop to center to best, but the pass is intercepted. And down the far boards, dumping it in is Hobbs for Birmingham. Harrison Harper back to retrieve the puck for the Reapers. Fires it up ice on a headman pass. Bringing the puck forward here is banging bodies is Brian Moore. He's given a rough ride and gets one extra shot in passing on Jake Cass. Passed up to the point by the Reapers, but McCloy's bid is intercepted. Birmingham will work on the far boards. This is Cass spinning away with it. He's overtaken. Centering pass to Moore. Sneaks under his forehand. Birmingham survives. Brought ahead by Jordan Martin, who's into the attacking zone down the near boards, but offside on the far side was Scotty Donahue, and that'll take us to a whistle. 9.02 remaining in this first period. The Carolina Reapers won. The Birmingham Bulls won. Hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. to go in the first period here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. The Carolina Reapers had the lead 1-0 on the first professional goal by Tyler Barrow. But getting it back for the Birmingham Bulls, the former Reaper, Sam Storman. Last night, I thought, was a game that was played at a really good clip. Both teams made mistakes. So it had a little bit of a different feel to it. It was close as this shot by Rose is blocked and it stings best back out to center. This one already has a different feel to it. It's a fantastic atmosphere for the Reapers and this place exploded when that first goal went in. Now a chance for Brian Moore. He's around Storm and centers. Low wrist shot. Lots with a save. And the rebound of the far side post is still loose. Austin Lotz on his head to keep that one out. He was spread eagle in the goal crease, and Brian Moore had the last whack at it, but was unable to get it over the spread lots. Now up to the point. Cup sweeps across for Andrew Lane. He had one already. Here's a wrist shot off a of body on the way through and out of play as Austin Lotz will get some love after that save. Mercy. It's a big play for Carolina. I thought Moore did a great job getting into attacking ice, making the move around Storman, but the Reapers unable to finish. It's a quick drive, is knocked down by Lotz. A centering pass, bounces back to the point. Line will be held here and dumped into the near side corner by the Carolina Reapers. Up the near boards, this puck is taken away initially. Now a shot, big rebound, Lotz makes the save. Once again, spreading the goal crease and keeps it out as he gets to the far side goal post with some pushing and shoving going on in back of the net. Good stop by Lotz again. It's the Reapers out shooting Birmingham by a 6-5 clip early in this contest. I'm very excited during the first period intermission to tell you about the creation of the Carolina Reapers organization and how the name came about, who deserves credit for the name and the logo design. And it's been a fun project that many within the organization have waited to share for quite some time. A takedown in the far side corner. That may have been a trip that Mark Wilson got away with. This puck is high in the air off the skirting of the net. As Biesinger will give it to the near side wing for Tyler Barrow. Calls for it up ice. It's a hair too far. As onto this puck is Mike Gerska, who was signed this week by Birmingham. Backhanded to between the faceoff circles. Harper steps into a long wrist shot. Caught and held onto by Austin Lotz. This is where lots can be dangerous too, and any goaltender can. When they start to get a feel for the puck throughout the course of a game, 
especially early. You get in the rhythm of making saves, and it becomes that much more difficult to score against you. Face off to the near circle in the Reapers attacking zone. A long time to set this one up as Drake Glover pokes it forward. This is interesting because Glove isn't normally the center on this line. It's normally Matt McNair, but it's been strange to see a new line combination as normally Gerard, McNair, and Glover have always found their way back together. Tanner Fraze is along with FX Gerard and Drake Glover currently. In the far corner, Gerard. Battling for puck possession here. Goes up to the far side boards. Drake Glover whacks the puck back behind the net where it'll be scooped up by Harrison Harper. He pirouettes and the Calgary Alberta natives right back out to center. Harper dumps it in. It won't make it to lots as it may have hit a funny bump in the boards that just killed the puck's momentum. Right along the near side of the goaltender's trapezoid, Glover and Gerard digging for possession as they get around a former good friend of theirs, Sam Storman, who was laughing and joking with his former teammates in the pregame warm-ups. Backhand to the head by Carson Rose. He'll find Jordan Martin, who works right up the near side boards, looking for Donahue, but the puck hops over his stick, and Moran will have to leave it for Andrew Lane. Lane sends it to the far boards for the captain, Taylor McCloy, and the Reapers are right back into attacking ice. Here's McCloy, centers through the slot. Moore winds and fires a slap shot wide of the far post. It'll catch the curvature in the boards, and Andrew Lane has to hold it in. All the way around the kick plate to Brian Moore in the near side corner. He's pressured from behind as Moore will get some help from Taylor McCloy here. Two by two, they battle along the near side hash marks. 5.30 to go in the first period. Reapers one, Bulls one. To the far side boards, Andrew Lane. Throws a one-handed stick check at the puck. Troy Button able to get it around him as it'll be backhanded deep by Colton Bates. Peeled free by Taylor McCloy as he'll roll a backhanded pass to Lane who pushes ahead for Brian Moore. Moore flips it up in the air. Glove to stick legally by the rookie Carson Rose who will play it to his defensive group. A headman look at Papalardo. This is off of his backhand as Lane comes to find it. Headman pass intercepted by Jake Cass, who fires a wrist shot off of McCloy, but the Bulls will hold the line. Directly in back of the goal, this is Aaron Huffnagel cycling with it. Huffnagel centers. Here's a chance and a good stop made by Brent Moran on the drive from Gerska. Gerska resets at the middle of the blue line. A forehand a pass to Jake Cass, who sends a long wrist shot that's soccered away by Jarrett Cup. And he got a solid right boot into that one. That'll send the Bulls all the way back into their own zone to reset where they do. And Dave Nippert will dump it in. Directly behind the net, Tommy Biesinger sends a pass off of a bull stick. Biesinger recovers on it. Two on two, here come the Reapers. Biesinger, backhands to the far wing, gets it right back. His shot fanned on. And Birmingham clears to the red line where Mark Wilson will possess for the Reapers. Wilson to Tyler Barrow, who has the Carolina goal in this game. Barrow calls for it, had the puck off of his stick. It's knocked away by Donahue. Now Reamer's coming to find it. Zach Reamer's working one-on-one -on -one against Jordan Martin. Finds Biesinger. Biesinger in the near corner, a one-touch pass to Tyler Barrow, who works in the near corner now. Barrow had the stick dislodged from his hands, loses possession, but Mark Wilson will grab it between the blue line and the red line and dump it right back in to the Reaper's end. Sam Storman will pick up the puck. He dumps it the length of the rink. Brent Moran with his eyes up, sees Mike Davis pressuring, and he'll cover on the near side goal post in his goal crease. 3.36 to go in the first period here in Fayetteville with a score, the Carolina Reapers won and the Birmingham Bulls won. Welcome to Freddy's. How are you guys doing? Meetings. Lunch meetings all week, all salads. Bean salads. Quinoa salads. Heirloom salads. Frise salads. Sometimes a guy needs a Freddy's original double, Chicago dog, and a turtle sundae. Make that two, please. Three. Absolutely. If it's gonna be bad, it better be good. Being bad never tasted this good. Freddy's, the experience that puts a smile on your face and the taste that brings you back. A great crowd. They have been electric here on this Saturday night in Fayetteville, North Carolina. The Carolina Reapers on a goal from the rookie Tyler Barrow have the had the lead 
at one nothing. But then it's Sam Storman showing off the wheels down the near side wing, and he scores. And Reaper fans will remember the handful of interviews with Sam Storman. A likable character, a very easy guy to pull for, and a hard worker. Good pressure here by Matt McNair as he's around Button, who took care of him, as Noah Holm will get to the puck. Into the far side corner, Holm will zip it up ice and dump it in. Moran out of his net to play it. This one hit off the break in the boards at the far corner. And the puck will stay in the Birmingham end. That's strange. There is just ever so slight of a lip right on those big double doors just below the goal line in the far side corner on that side. It's the first time all year we've seen a puck hit off that divide and squirt right back to the net. Reapers survive, a bouncing pass up through center as Button will drop McNair. Chance the other way for Papalardo. His shot goes off of two bodies as Miles Harvey will escort him into the near side corner. Picked up by Jake Cass, who saucers a pass to Carson Rose, an off-angle shot. He thinks it's in. They score! It took a while for Ron Morello to point at the goal, but that puck sneaks under the near side leg pad of Brent Moran, and the Birmingham Bulls are gonna have a 2-1 lead as Carson Rose hits a milestone of 20 goals this season. Time of this goal will be 17-22 into the first period. And Rose, for a long time, was the only one who saw it. An off-angle shot beats Moran, and now the Reapers go back on the attack. A centering pass intended for McCloy is knocked away by Dave Nippard. And here comes Birmingham. Centering pass to Nippard slides wide as he's dropped by Harrison Harper. Always interesting to see those two go at it as their former training partners. Best will drop it for Oliveri, looking for a shooting lane, off-angle shot, handcuffs lots. The rebound is loose in the high slot, and McCloy gives to Oliveri. He fires an off-angle slap shot, big rebound, still loose in front. Lots on his back, kept it out, and a huge stop for Birmingham, as now we've got a whistle. As it looks like we may have is it a goaltender equipment problem for lots? That's exactly what it is. Austin Lotz lost his leg pad on the play as it was just being held on by the toe loop that fits over the skate. He blew both of his Velcro straps and the leg pad had wrapped all the way around his left leg to the other end, leaving his knee and shin unprotected. So while he takes care of that, both teams will skate back to their respective benches with 1.52 to go in the first period. Ron Morello will give the signal for everybody to get back into action. As the faceoff will generate from where the puck was when the play stopped. And 95% of the time, that would be in the Reapers attacking in because that's normally when a goaltender loses a glove or a mask. But no, when the linesman Kyle Gaspari realized what had happened, the puck was almost into the Reaper's end. Yes, it is here now. Lane will find Biesinger. This has been the best line for Carolina all night. A head man look for Barrow. He's in, but loses the puck down the near side boards. Skated into the far side corner. Barrow will find Reamers behind the net. Getting help from Biesinger on the backhand. His pass sniffed out and squashed by Jordan Martin, who will bring it ahead. Lift it on to Brent Moran, who will play a little bit of center field here. He's going to opt to throw the puck out as the Bulls get off on a change. Minute to go in this first period. 2-1 Birmingham leading Carolina here in Fayetteville. Into the near side corner. This puck will be scooped up by Andrew Lane. 
Brought ahead to Tanner Fraze, who will give to Jarrett Cup. Cup will dump it in off of Fraze as this puck will roll forward. Harper, excuse me rather, that's Holm, who will move the puck to the far side boards. A head man look for Mike Davis. He'll backhand it in, rolls on to Moran, who wants to club it into the near side corner, and so does. Brought ahead by Carolina as the Reapers will backhand it into the near side corner. Tanner Fraze will go to chase along with FX Girard. Swept around to the far side point. Oliveri holds it in. 20 seconds to go in the first period. A takedown in the near side corner. Button, not guilty of a penalty, as now the puck will squirt down to Brett Moran's end. He's way out of his net. Made a play on Papalardo, but didn't get enough wood on that puck to send it out of the zone. At the red line, the Reapers will settle to dump this one in. To the near side corner it goes. It'll be taken there by Gerska, and that is where the first period comes to a close. Shots on goal in the opening frame for the Carolina Reapers, 13, and for the Birmingham Bulls, 9. But on the scoreboard, now well, hang on. Brian Moore sharing some words in passing with Jake Pompilardo. And this may not be quite the nice clean ending to the period we thought. Does not look like any penalties will be levied as Oliveri and Nippert are the last to separate. But Brian Moore skating right over by the Birmingham bench as you just saw. As Dave Nippert converses here with Tanner Fraze, and everybody is going to skate off. Or excuse me, rather, that was Miles Harvey. Of ill consequence, though, everybody back to the locker room. No penalties assessed. <laughs> Let's step aside for these messages from our corporate partners. Coming back on the other side, we'll put this period on reset for you. This is Carolina Reapers Hockey. Hey, you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Welcome to Freddy's. How are you guys doing? Meetings. Lunch meetings all week, all salads. Bean salads. Quinoa salads. Heirloom salads. Frise salads. Sometimes a guy needs a Freddy's original double, Chicago dog, and a turtle sundae. Make that two, please. Three. Absolutely. If it's gonna be bad, it better be good. Being bad never tasted this good. Freddy's, the experience that puts a smile on your face and the taste that brings you back. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. A strong start to this hockey game for both the Carolina Reapers and the Birmingham Bulls as we welcome you back inside of the Crown Coliseum. I'm Drew Blevins alongside Jeff. I thought the Reapers did a fantastic job getting off the block and starting that game with a little bit of panache. It's Tyler Barrow who would be one of your more unlikely goal scorers in pro hockey. As we told you when he made his SPHL debut in yesterday, or excuse me, two weeks ago, 
Barrow is somebody who was the fifth leading scorer in all of NCAA D3 hockey at Wilkes University and almost dragged the Colonels into the NCAA Division III tournament as they lost to Geneseo in the conference final. But good to see him get on the scoreboard as I think that's a meaningful goal for him to score. Unfortunately, the Reapers are not able to follow up off of that goal. They hemorrhage one on a strong shot from Sam Storm and one that I still believe that Brent Moran would like to have back. And then finding a small hole in Moran trying to seal to the far side goal post is Carson Rose. And the rookie is just a natural born goal scorer. It's been a lot of fun to watch what he does. And for Birmingham, they found a diamond in the rough here in Carson Rose. And somebody who complements the style of play of Mike Davis and Scotty Donahue very well. And even though there's been a high amount of turnover on this Birmingham roster for Kevin Kerr and Craig Simchuk, they have seen what Rose does, and they have really started to build the group around the rookie, and with good reason, too. You see just how potent he can be and a really, really big start to the game for Birmingham. Told you in the Red Pepper pregame show that it was going to be exceedingly important for Birmingham to throw the first punch. They don't. The Reapers do. But the Bulls are able to get right back in this game and take the lead late. The official score lines for you are as follows as soon as we get the live scoring system to update here in the broadcast booth at the Crown Coliseum. 2.49 into the first period, it's Tyler Barrow with his first professional goal, scoring on an assist from Zach Reimers. Then 9.23 into the period, Sam Storman with his fifth of the season from Colton Bates and Carson Rose. And then Rose, 17-22 into the period from Jake Cass and Dave Nippard. And the other thing I really thought about that period is this is going to be a Ron Morello officiated game. And what we mean by that is Morello has been known to be a lenient official both ways. We've seen some physicality. We've seen guys dropped. We've seen pushing and shoving. This is going to be a good old-fashioned hockey game. And for a Birmingham group that likes to play physically, this certainly favors their style of play. But watch how the Reapers push back, and let's see if they're able to get something going offensively off of a rush if they're able to use a little bit of that speed. We'll step aside for a quick commercial break. Coming back from it, you want to learn more about the Carolina Reapers and why in the world the Fayetteville Marksmen decided to change names and colors for a night? We'll tell you coming up after this break. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Hey, hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Welcome to Freddy's. How are you guys doing? Meetings. Lunch meetings all week. All salads. Bean salads. Quinoa salads. Heirloom salads. Frisee salads. Sometimes a guy needs a Freddy's original double, Chicago dog, and a turtle sundae. Make that two, please. Three. Absolutely. If it's going to be bad, it better be good. Being bad never tasted this good. Freddy's, the experience that puts a smile on your face and the taste that brings you back. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. 
For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Marky? Carolina's dentist offers the best in oral care and technology. Hope you're brushing twice a day like we discussed. And don't forget to make that six month appointment, okay? We'd like to keep those pretty white teeth looking good for you. Come experience positively different dentistry at Carolina's Dentist, the official dentist of the Fayetteville Marksman. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Welcome back to the Crown Coliseum in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Drew Blevins alongside you on the Red Pepper Radio Network. And this has been a game that's had some speed, it's had some hits, and we've seen some offense already. But why in the world are we talking about the Carolina Reapers and not the Fayetteville Marksmen? This was the brainchild of my predecessor, the former play-by-play -play voice of the Fayetteville Marksmen, Shane Bednar. And it was way back, I believe, in 2017 that he had a rogue tweet that went out into the Twitter sphere talking about how one day he was going to own a hockey team called the Carolina Reapers. The logo was going to be a red pepper that was holding a hockey stick in the shape of a reaper scythe. And lo and behold, that's exactly what the logo was. And Bednard put his heart and soul into the organization in order to help them get to that spot where they were, the Carolina Reapers. He didn't design the logo. That was done by Tyler Earls, and a fantastic job by Earls getting the colors together and getting that scheme together. Just a beautifully put together logo, and it's a beautiful look. And unfortunately, this was supposed to debut just a little while ago. But uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, the Reapers were not able to make their debut. And unfortunately, Sean is unable to be here tonight, but I know that he's watching along. So for Sean Bednard, we certainly appreciate all the work that he has put in, and we hope he's enjoying following along as this was really his baby, and I'm honored to be a small part of uh, bringing the rest of the experience to all of you fine folks at home. But that's the story of the Carolina Reapers and one we're looking forward to bringing to you throughout the rest of the night. We'll be right back after these messages and we'll go around the SPHL and the world of sports. This is Reapers Hockey. At Carolina's Dentist and Spring Lake Oral Surgery, we believe in creating a positively different experience. We are proud to serve Eastern North Carolina, including Fayetteville, Spring Lake, and Rayford. We use the best in dental technique and technology to make Carolina's dentist your one-stop shop for quality dental care and oral care. Book your appointment today to come experience the Carolina's dentist difference. Baby, we have spiders on every corner outside our house. Okay, I'll call someone to take care of it. Baby, we have fire ants all over the yard. All righty, I'll call someone else to take care of that. Baby, these mosquitoes, you have got to go. Uh, here we go again. One call to St. Peter Pest Control provides all these services. Total pest protection for one low monthly payment. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world. 
of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Hey, hey you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Welcome to Freddy's. How are you guys doing? Meetings. Lunch meetings all week. All salads. Bean salads. Quinoa salads. Heirloom salads. Frise salads. Sometimes a guy needs a Freddy's original double, Chicago dog, and a turtle sundae. Make that two, please. Three. Absolutely. If it's going to be bad, it better be good. Being bad never tasted this good. Freddy's, the experience that puts a smile on your face and the taste that brings you back. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy-duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. For the final time during our first period intermission report, we welcome you back inside the Crown Coliseum. The Carolina Reapers trailing the Birmingham Bulls through 20 minutes of play. Let's go around the SPHL, dropping the puck in about 15 minutes. The Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs hosting the Macon Mayhem. Roanoke closely watching this contest here. The Rail Yard Dogs need Birmingham to lose. The Bulls need the Rail Yard Dogs to lose as both of those teams are the only two teams that can clinch the eighth and final playoff spot in the SPHL. Pivotal weekend, winnable games for Roanoke. Birmingham on the outside looking in of this one. But nonetheless, a really, really good chance for both of these teams to control their own destiny and find a way to get the job done battling against the other. A little bit later on tonight, dropping the puck at 8 p.m., the Evansville Thunderbolts will take on the Quad City Storm. The Bolts were able to clinch a playoff spot with the Marksman win last night. They'll take on Quad City. And everybody here in Carolina really pulling for the Thunderbolts tonight as a win for Evansville would mean that the Reapers can separate themselves a little bit further from Quad City in the standings. Also dropping the puck at 8 p.m., the Huntsville Havoc taking on the Peoria Rivermen. Huntsville scored a big win last night. Because the Havoc won and the Marksmen won, it's just a four-point separation between the Carolina Reapers and the Peoria Rivermen for third in the SPHL. And knowing about the road trip that comes up next for this Carolina Reaper group going to Pensacola, it's within striking distance. And certainly the Reapers can earn a little bit better seed, but they're going to need some help again from Huntsville tonight. And the nightcap this evening, the Vermilion County Bobcats taking on the Pensacola Ice Flyers. It'll also be a packed Sunday as well with Macon going to Knoxville, Quad City, and Vermilion County as well. But the Reapers will be off getting prepared for their longest road trip by distance of the year as they'll be heading off to the beach in Pensacola, Florida. Let's go to the world of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. And, of course, the headline revolves around that team that wears light blue in Chapel Hill as the number eight seed North Carolina Tar Heels upset number one and defending champion Baylor 
that's a huge win for Hubert Davis and Carolina as they'll be going to the Sweet 16 in Davis's first year at the helm. Going on right now, number three, Tennessee, leading number 11, Michigan, 37-32 at halftime. Number four, Providence taking care of number 12, Richmond, after their upset win, 34-20, there at the under four media timeout. Other finals from today, number one, Kansas survives a strong challenge from number nine, Creighton, 79-72. And later on this evening, you'll be able to see UCLA and St. Mary's. The number 15, St. Peter's Peacocks, after their win over Kentucky, will take on the Murray State Racers, Arkansas, New Mexico State, in the 9.40 p.m. tip-off. Number one, Gonzaga, and number nine, Memphis. Folks, nearly time for second period puck drop here from Reaper World. We'll be right back to Fayetteville right after this. Marquee. Carolina's Dentist offers the best in oral care and technology. Hope you're brushing twice a day like we discussed. And don't forget to make that six-month appointment, okay? We'd like to keep those pretty white teeth looking good for you. Come experience positively different dentistry at Carolina's Dentist, the official dentist of the Fayetteville Marksman. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Welcome back to Fayetteville, North Carolina. Drew Blevins alongside you on the Reaper Radio Network. The Carolina Reapers trail the Birmingham Bulls 2-1 after one period of play. No carryover penalties and or power plays. The Reapers in their home Navy uniforms, yellow and red trim, yellow numericals with Navy and red socks. The Bulls in their road white uniforms, black breezers, black numericals, white socks, as the Reapers will work from left to right across your radio dial here in the second period, but the Bulls are into their attacking ice first. Directly behind to Brent Moran, this puck will be scooped up the near side boards. It'll be held in by McTavish. Sends it into the near side corner as Birmingham will play it back behind the net. This is Colton Bates, spins it off the skirting of the cage, has the rebound in front. Moran wants a whistle, he'll melt it down just 25 seconds into this second period. Brent Moran has been a goaltender who I think has been characterized so well by his response to adversity. And he's been somebody who's kept the Reapers in contests all year long. And, and I think one of the best examples of this is how well he played in nearly a 50-save performance against the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs on Thursday. It's a 10 a.m. game. It's one of those games that's very sleepy. And even though... It was a record-setting crowd here in Fayetteville of 7,201. It was a game that was a little slow. And for Corey Melkert, he didn't love the effort from his group. But they got the win. And Moran, a large reason why. This puck gets tied up in the skates of Taylor McCloy. It's one to the near side half wall, and here comes Brian Moore. McCloy driving with him. Moore stops at the near side hash marks, a backdoor pass. He was looking for the driving best, but he was mirrored closely. Moore comes over to grab the puck and he'll chip it deep into his own end. Moran will direct traffic in the near side corner for Harrison Harper. Steers it up ice, but his pass is errant. Wide of best, who's dropped by his own man, Beesinger. That was an awkward collision as Corey Melkert and Jason Binkley watch on perplexed from the bench. 18.40 to go in the second period. This is dumped all the way around the end wall. Picked up behind the net by Davis, who will take a step here. Turning with it is Jordan Martin, who sends it up to the point for Noah Helm. 
Holm takes the puck at the near side, hash marks. He gives in front. Here's a one-timer on goal by McTavish. The rebound is loose, and Oliveri will sweep it up to center. Good stop by Moran. As the Reapers survive a rush and now cause a turnover in their attacking zone. Reamers in the near side corner, punished by Holm and dropped. The puck goes up the far side half wall. It's intercepted. An up ice pass. Banks off of the stick of Scotty Donahue and into the near side corner it goes. They'll be scooped around to the near side board. Stolen away is the chant. Let's go Reapers rings through the rafters here at the Crown Coliseum. Dumped in as Gerska plays it to the far point man. Mike Davis now in the far side corner. Lost possession on his backhand, but he's going to get it right back with some help from Colton Bates. Brent Moran needing another whistle. Melts this puck in the far side goal post, and the Reapers back on their heels to start this second period. And this is particularly perplexing as well because the Reapers haven't been a team all year long who have struggled to get things going. They've been a team that has started games better than they finished them. But the second period hasn't always been the kindest, and it doesn't feel like Carolina's ever been able to get to their game in this contest so far. Turning with it here is Colton Bates. A low wrist shot is blocked by McNair. He's stung by the shot as he hobbles around with Brett Moran stopping the puck behind his net. Looking up ice here is Harper. A crisp pass to Tanner Fraze at center. He's ahead of his own blue line. Backhands it into the attacking zone off of Glover with McNair crashing for the puck. Tied up behind the net by Gerska. McNair will get to it. Matt McNair hangs on to it despite dogged pressure from Gerska. He found Glover in the far corner, overtaken by Jake Cass. He'll zip it up the far side boards for Huffnagel, who fumbles with the puck at the red line. Reapers will dump it right back in as McNair goes to chase in the near side corner. Watch closely by Gerska as he leaves it in the near corner, looking for Tanner Fraze, who overskated the puck, and now it's chipped ahead to Pompolardo. He drives in, forehand, backhand, trying to lift it. Moran seals at the far side goal post as Huffnagel finds the rebound. He makes a move to the near goal post. Big stop by Moran again as he sealed himself low to the ice, and the Reapers clear out to the red line. 16-20 to go in the second period. 2-1 Birmingham leading Carolina. Jarrett Cup holding the puck for the Reapers as he tried to work up the far boards, and he will. So this is backhanded up ice by Brian Moore, finding Fraze. He was stick-checked, and Birmingham's right back ahead of their attacking blue line down the near boards. This is Jordan Martin, who's been a really key player for Birmingham in this series of games. Up the far side boards, McNair overskates the puck. Birmingham will dump it right back in as Mark Wilson goes to fight for it. Finds Jarrett Cup in the far corner. His pass goes off the stick of Taylor McCloy right back out to center as the Reapers seem to have the ice tilted to their own end. Gerska now with a backhand pass in front, swept toward the net by Martin. The shot partially blocked by McCloy. Rolled up ice by the marksman as driving it here is Brian Moore. Tied up but drops it for Oliveri. He sends it to the front, big stop by Lotz. The rebound curled toward the net, and the Reapers can't buy one, but we've got an arm up and a penalty upcoming. This will be tripping, and the question is who's the guilty party? The penalty is going to go against Troy Button, and the Carolina Reapers will go to the St. Peter Pest Control power play for the first time in this one, as Button will take a seat for tripping, 4.37 into the second period. Carolina scored twice on the power play in the third period in last night's win 4-3, and the Reapers are going to need that type of success on special teams again. Oliveri feeds it to the far side wing for Brian Moore, cross ice pass to Biesinger, his wrist shot partially blocked by Cass, the rebound scooped up by Fraze. Fraze will play it right back behind the net as Glover moves it all the way up to the point for Don Oliveri. Give it across to Brian Moore. Backhands to Oliveri. He's been good on the power play recently. Shovels to Biesinger. He fires a cross ice pass to the far face off circle. It handcuffs Brian Moore. Carson Rose knocks into him. 
But there's puck support there as the marksman sent it to Biesinger at the near circle. Another cross ice pass to Moore. He gives to Oliveri. Uncorks it. Just wide of the far post with traffic in front, no less. Brian Moore will hold the line for the marksman. Moore, toe drag, sends it to Glover on the far side goal post. He centers. Mike Davis diving for it. He's able to get it out with a minute 10 to go on the minor to Button. Reapers will reset. Biesinger dumps it to the far side corner with Reamers going to grab the puck for Carolina. Reamers overtaken. This may be a shorthanded chance for Birmingham down the far boards as Oliveri will closely watch Papalardo, forces him to cough it up. Oliveri makes a step on the far side half wall. Here comes Carolina. Oliveri with McCloy. He pulls the trigger instead and misses just high of the crossbar. Everybody resets as Biesinger is unable to hold the line. A chance the other way for Papalardo. Run into by Taylor McCloy who will take the puck with 35 seconds to go the Reapers power play. Tyler Barrow, who has the lone goal for Caroline tonight, sends a centering pass to Taylor Best. He drives toward the front, shoots it. Big rebound, went through the legs of Lutz and stayed out. And Birmingham survives all the way down to the far side. That's a good first stop by Austin Lutz, but he almost gave up the rebound goal as the Reapers have one more drive up the ice. Here's Best, has Barrow, his wrist shot, kicked away by Lutz, and he'll melt the rebound with nine seconds to go on the Reapers' power play. Mercy. 13-32 to go here in this second period. The Carolina Reapers have nine seconds to go on the power play. They trail Birmingham 2-1. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Welcome back to the Crown Coliseum. Drew Blevins alongside you. The Carolina Reapers duking it out with the Birmingham Bulls here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. The Reapers have nine seconds to go on their first power play of the game as the Bulls look for what would be a massive penalty kill, something they've struggled to do all season. They're operating at under 77% coming into the contest. Troy Buttons out of the box. They kill this one, though. It's the Reapers. Get to the puck here, sent to Tyler Barrow, who's up ice, but this is backhanded off the near side half wall and will roll into the near corner. Holding the puck here is Harrison Harper. So he gives it to the near side boards. Tyler Barrow finishes his man as Huffnagel makes a move to center. Drops it for Colton Bates, who's knocked from his feet on a good clean hit by Jarrett Cup. Andrew Lane will backhand to Biesinger. He's dispossessed at the top of the near faceoff circle and the Reaper attacking in. Biesinger wars for the puck back behind the net. He wraps and fires, but we've got a delayed penalty. It's going to go against Biesinger. High sticking will be the call, and the Boston native none too thrilled about it. Biesinger still arguing with Ron Morello. Has to be careful not to take more than just a minor here. So this penalty will come 7-12 into the second period. And a big chance for Birmingham to go up by two here. Next two minutes will be critical for both of these two teams. The Bulls scored once on the power play yesterday, but failed on another. Here's Carson Rose's shot. It's blocked by Wilson, who will watch his man into the near side corner. Carolina clears, but it's not out. Sam Storman will hold the line for Birmingham. Plays it directly behind the cage as the Reapers try to sweep it out on the far side boards. The line is held, given to Carson Rose at the top of the near circle. He feeds it to Sam Storman to the far faceoff circle. Here's a low wrist shot that goes off of Miles Harvey, but the rebound is scooped up by Birmingham to Carson Rose at the near point. Fed all the way up to Sam Storman. He uncorks one, punched out by Moran. Big rebound in front, and Davis was shut down by Brent Moran. Up to the point in Sam Storman. This is intercepted by Matt McNair. 
who will drive here. McNair, one-on-one -on -one against Storman. Long wrist shot in and out of the glove of Austin Lotz as McNair gets to the rebound, bumped by Storman, who will knock the puck free, and Birmingham's back across the red line. Dumped in off the skates of Scotty Donahue, and the former Carolina Thunderbird will feed it directly behind the net. Donahue going to chase the puck here, sends it off the far side corner boards to the point, and that will be handled by Birmingham as Donahue will get it in the far side corner again, trading places with Hupnagel. Gives it up to the point. Mike Davis, excuse me, rather Jake Cass, will feed it to Donahue. His shot blocked on the way through. As Cass will reset. Here's Carson Rose firing. His shot knocked away by Brent Moran. It does stay in play somehow. Off the extremely high part of the glass, and FX Girard will clear it the length of the rink. Just 30 seconds to go in the Reapers. Freddie's penalty kill. 11-10 to go in this second period. Birmingham back into attacking ice as Huffnagel will drop it to the point. Nobody home. This is a free clear for the Reapers as Holm tried to dump it back in, but far linesman Noah Ackerman on top of it. This is offside. Same officiating crew here in Fayetteville all weekend long. Ron Morello wearing the bands with Kyle Gaspari and Noah Ackerman on the lines. Morello has officiated this contest before. He was the referee the last time these two teams met in Birmingham. Face off won by the Bulls as they'll hold it their own blue line. Gerska pushes it. Up the near side boards is driving with it here, looking for a shooting land and putting it on net awkwardly was Matthew Hobbs, but the Reapers survive the length of the rink as Biesinger comes out of the box. We go back to five on five hockey. Good stop by Moran as fans bang on the glass while the Bulls try to break it out up the near side boards. A head man pass, hops over the stick of McTavish. Moran is out of his net to leave it on a tee for Miles Harvey. Run into, but we'll get some puck support on the far side half wall from Drake Glover. Marksman resetting their own end. This is Mark Wilson, who will feed it up the near side boards for Glover. He lost the puck. Birmingham back across the red line, but Best is there to Miles Harvey. The longtime ECA Cheller, former Providence Friar, will dump it into the far side corner. Big hit laid there. That'll knock the puck free for Best in the near corner, but intercepted by Birmingham. Had bad luck. It's Carson Rose. He fires high and wide. That shot may have been tipped by Jarrett Cup. Puck scooped up ice. Here come the Reapers. Down the far boards. That's Best, who centers to Brian Moore. Lost the puck as he had his stick lifted. And three bulls on to Brian Moore. Drops it back for his defensive group. This is intercepted, but Birmingham is offside, and now we've got a fight at center as Brian Moore's come uncorked. Dropping the gloves here. He's all over his man. He turtled Jake Papalardo, who wanted nothing to do with it when he saw the massive fists of Brian Moore start flying. Nine thirty-two to go in the second period here in Carolina. The Reapers trail the Bulls by one. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for twenty-eight or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Nine thirty-two to go in the second period, just beyond the halfway point in this hockey game. The Carolina Reapers trailing the Birmingham Bulls 2-1 here in Fayetteville. Shots are dead even at 16 apiece. Brian Moore and Jake Papalardo each sitting five minutes for fighting. Ron Morello has come over to the Reaper penalty box and he's having words with Brian Moore. And no extraneous penalties have gone up on the board yet. And, and this has been a development in the school of officiating 
is what constitutes as instigation, what constitutes as aggression, and can you have a fight that is just five minute majors to each party? More and Popolardo with their helmets off in their respective penalty boxes. Popolardo has a two minute minor up on the Birmingham board right now. And he didn't know he was going to the box. And while fans are cheering now, I would almost fully imagine that we're gonna see Brian Moore be assessed a five minute fighting major. The Reapers only have four out there. And you heard the reaction with Papalardo going to the box. Reapers fans here in Carolina think they're going to be on the power play for two minutes. But much to their chagrin momentarily, I would wager we're gonna play four on four two minutes, and then the Bulls are gonna go on a three minute power play, and that's exactly what's gonna happen. And that's the tricky part right there for Brian Moore. Papalardo may have said something that triggered the fight, but he never dropped his gloves officially. May have gotten a shove or two in, so it's a five minute fighting major to Moore and a two minute roughing minor to Papalardo. Fans with a smattering of boos here downstairs, understandably so. As if you're a Reapers fan, you would really like to see a pair of fighting majors, but I think that's the right call in that instance. And Birmingham, needing to stay on their discipline in this game and not give the Reapers opportunities does so in that instance. A lot of open space out there. This is a dangerous game for Birmingham, four on four. Here's a low snap wrister by Cup that's knocked away by Austin Lotz with the puck being scooped up by the Birmingham Bulls and a new group coming out for Carolina. Down the near sideboards, Sam Storman overskates the puck. Oliveri chips it ahead for FX Girard. He's got McNair going with him, feeds him. Here's a wrist shot. Lots flashes leather and keeps his team in front by one. That's a great glove stop by Austin Lotz. Capable netminder who has been to the ECHL on more than one occasion and is stuck up there is if there's any goaltender that has been the epitome of the yo-yo between the SPHL and the ECHL, it's been Austin Lotz, and that's one of his better saves. Told you early on, you could see him getting into a rhythm after giving up the goal early, and he's been really good since. On top of his game, scrambled a couple of times, made big saves, but that's why Austin Lotz is here in this situation. This is a huge game for Birmingham. 8-10 to go in the second period, 2-1 Bulls in front of the Reapers. This puck is dug free by Miles Harvey, but he loses it to Aaron Huffnagel, and the Bulls are out beyond center. A headman pass stretches too far for Jordan Martin as he'll bang behind the net looking for it. Reapers the first team to it instead. Up the near side boards, here comes Carolina. This will be dumped in by Drake Glover. He's got it in the near side corner. Run off by Troy Button as Huffnagel gets to the puck. Huffnagel down the far side boards, cuts to center. Looking for a shooting lane, he fires low but misses the net. In the near side corner, this will be scooped up by Tanner Fraze. A headman pass for McNair is too far for him. He's back racing with Storman, and Sam Storman a step ahead, wins the foot race. This will be icing and will set up an attacking zone draw for Birmingham as the minor to Papalardo expires. And this is tricky now for Carolina because it's three minutes to kill off instead of two, but Birmingham can store Alamode in these three minutes because it's a major penalty and all majors have to time out. We'll see what Craig Simchuk can draw up here. As you would imagine that the next goal in this hockey game is massive and whether it's for Carolina to tie it up or for Birmingham to take the lead by two, it's going to put a lot of pressure and a lot of weight on the shoulders of your opponent. Dumped in around the boards, is pinching here is Carson Rhodes. 
Miles Harvey steps in front of him as the Reapers get to the puck. McNair unable to get it out. Line held by Jake Cass to Carson Rose near side hash marks. Feeds to Cass, who will put it to the far side faceoff circle. Quick wrist shot by Papalardo is over the crossbar as the Reapers get to it, but a great play by Carson Rose to hold the line at the near side boards. Swept across the kick plate to Papalardo. He feeds Cass up at the point. Sweeps to Carson Rose. He likes this spot. He shoots. Moran kicks it free. Big rebound in front. Backhanded on net. Moran says no and melts it. Brent Moran, good movement, good length in net. 2.04 to go in the Brian Moore Major. And we'll see how Brian Moore gets managed as Corey Melkert knows how much he needs Moore out there to help move the puck, but Moore has struggled in these past handful of games. He's looked to step slow. Did have an assist last night, but the Reapers are going to need a little more, and whether it comes from Moore or someone else, who knows? Nearly a shorthanded breakaway from McCloy as he knocked the pass back out to center. Birmingham dumps it in as the Reapers will wind and slap at the length of the rink. Down the kick plate, this lands perfectly behind the net and a chance for Biesinger to go chase it. This is where Birmingham will need to be crisp, is in the zone entry. They're right in down the near side boards. It's turning with it here is Colton Bates. Fed up to the point for Cass, who will set things up to Bates at the near hash marks. He turns it over. McCloy sweeps it to Biesinger. Shorthanded chance for Carolina. Biesinger feeds to McCloy. His one-timer shut down by Lotz. No rebound. Goodness, what a stop from Austin Lotz. Taylor McCloy shaken up in the far side corner. That was nearly a tie hockey game as B. Singer drove it to Taylor McCloy and Austin Lotz was at the top of his goal crease waiting. McCloy hampered on the play as the marksman set up a shot from Harvey who's bumped by Davis. Lotz swallows it, will redo it from the far faceoff circle again. A minute and 11 seconds to go in the Freddy's penalty kill for the Reapers. You can visit Freddy's at their Ramsey Street location. And when the Reapers kill off a penalty here at home, everyone at the Crown Coliseum wins free custard courtesy of Freddy's. Birmingham wins the draw on their own end. As Carson Rose will sweep it to the far side wing. Top of the faceoff circles, Papalardo found Rose. He'll push it to Sam Storman, who fans on the pass. Gerard working against Storman as he'll finish him into the far side boards. Birmingham holding the zone, though. Turning with it here is Jordan Martin, who will feed it up to the point. Storman fakes the slap shot and will sweep across for Carson Rose. Rose with a long look in, drops it back for Storman. He pulls the trigger on a wrist shot, punched out by Moran. Big rebound in the skates of Papalardo as back to grab this one is nippered, but the puck will be shot the length of the rink instead by the Reapers with just 20 seconds to go in the Moore Major. Storman pressured from behind by Reamers, using body positioning to try to hold possession, looking for some puck support. Reamers doing yeoman's work in the far side corner, but Birmingham will prevail on the near boards. Right back out beyond center, it's Martin who will feed Noah Holm in the far side corner. This puck's over his stick, Brian Moore, right back out. He wants to join the play and he will. Stationed on the near wing, Brian Moore button hooks to grab the puck and feeds the far side wing. Driving in is the defenseman, Andrew Lane, who took a hit into the far side boards. Reapers will take the puck at the red line at the center ice dot. This is Reamers. Feeds to the far wing. Brian Moore shucks off a would-be checker, but this is intercepted by Birmingham and a punishing blow in the corner as this puck is out of play. Was it tipped? Ron Morello yet to give a signal. He's going to converse here. It looked to go out cleanly from our vantage point. But this is a good piece of officiating for Morello. He was in a tough, tough spot to watch. It is a delay of game penalty. And the Carolina Reapers will go to the power play right after this break. 
Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Four oh five to go in the second period. Birmingham will send Mike Gerska to the box for delay of game, shooting the puck cleanly over the glass. And the Reapers will go to their second St. Peter Pest Control power play of the hockey game. This penalty comes 15:55 into the second period. St. Peter Pest Control provides year-round pest control solutions. Send all your bugs to see St. Peter. The Bulls are unable to get this one out. Reapers will set it up. Here's Biesinger at the near circle. Tommy Biesinger working here. Feeds right into the middle where Tanner Fraze will push it to Don Oliveri. Cycles to the far circle for more. On court a slap shot knocked down by Lotz. Biesinger onto the rebound. Gives to Oliveri. Shovels it right back to the top of the near circle. Biesinger in front for Fraze. His backhanded pass is knocked down. Oliveri tries to get in front of Davis. He can't. Mike Davis is away. Biesinger right on top of him. Davis lifts it on a Moran who throws out the glove side shoulder and keeps it out. Best top of the game so far by Brent Moran on the shorthanded breakaway. And the Reapers will reset. Oliveri backhands to Tommy Biesinger who will send it across for Brian Moore. He'll drop for Tanner Frey, sets up Oliveri on a one-timer just wide of the near side goal post. Birmingham to it, right back out to the red line, but awaiting it there is Brian Moore. Moore going to try to do it himself down the near side wing. Here he goes. Moore, one-handed, holding off Sam Storman, holds the puck in the far side boards, watched closely by Davis. His pass is stopped by Biesinger, who will control now to Oliveri between the face-off circles. He uncorks a slap shot. They score! Oliveri on the power play. We're tied. What a blast from Don Oliveri. The second night in a row, he's fired a howitzer. Just below the crossbar, and the Carolina Reapers tie it. Time of this goal will be 17-31 into the second period. Don Oliveri will have his 14th of the season, and the crowd loves it in Carolina. Here's a long shot, sticked away by Lotz to the far side corner. Picked up there by Matt McNair. He'll get some help from FX Girard. Tommy Biesinger will have an assist, along with Brian Moore. Here's a pass right to center. Here's Cup on his backhand. Got tied up from behind. And Lotz was ready with the goal paddle as the Reapers find a little more life here. Up to the near side point. Holding Andrew Lane. Pulls the trigger off the far side goal post. He nearly gave Carolina the lead. FX Sherrard backhands down the near boards. This is intercepted as here comes Scotty Donahue. Down the near wing, Donahue drives to the front. This is a hard nose play. Moran stays sealed on the near side goal post and melts it. A minute and 52 seconds to go here in the second period in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Brent Moran keeps it tied after the Oliveri blast. What a game and what an atmosphere here in Fayetteville. This faceoff will be to the blocker side of Brent Moran. McCloy will take the draw for Carolina. McCloy wins the draw as Oliveri will work up the near side boards. Now a foot race. McCloy pressuring Mike Gerska, forces it into a bad pass. Oliveri down the near side boards. His wrist shot just wide off the near side goal post. That may have hit the outside of the net. Digging for it here is Tyler Barrow. 
Barrow unable to hold the line as this puck sent up the far side glass by the Bulls. That'll send everybody twisting back for it. And Harrison Harper is the first back. This is icing and no change coming for Birmingham with 86 seconds to go in the second period. This is a critical draw coming up here for Carolina. The Reapers can win this one. They can hem in a tired Birmingham group. And I think that's the discussion here with Taylor McCloy. He'll go in to dig for this puck. Tyler Barrow to the far wing. Zach Reamer's lined up in front of the net. It's Harvey and Wilson who are the defensemen. Face off won by Birmingham. And a big draw win if they're able to clear this out cleanly, and they are. Harvey will spin back in his own zone. He's got it using the long reach, sidesteps his man, and will skate it up himself. Harvey takes a couple of whacks as he backhands it into the near side corner. Gerska twisting back to find the puck. He'll work up the far side boards and hits the captain, Davis. Feeding it forward for Carson Rose as the puck runs behind the goal line. Rose is smashed on the end wall, but keeps possession. Sweeps to Bates who will drop it for Brody Duncan with a tie up here. Mark Wilson having his stick held by Carson Rose. This is frustrating him in front. Here's a low wrist shot. Kicks just wide as Harvey will watch Rose. Behind the net, Davis centers. What a stop by Moran. Kicks out the rebound to the near side corner. That's huge from Brent Moran to keep us tied. And now Taylor McCloy is going to have a chance. Looking for a shooting lane taken care of by Bates as he's dropped in the far side corner. Hard hit delivered here by Tyler Barrow as the Bulls will drive up the near side boards. Donahue curls to Bates, who tries to dump it in. Jarrett Cup there awaiting it. He gave it up ice to Barrow, who turned it over. Now Tanner Fraze dumps this one in for the Reapers. Just 13 seconds to go in this second period. What a hockey game we have going here. Dumped in beyond the goal line. The first one back is Andrew Lane. This is icing with eight seconds to go in this second period. Birmingham out shooting Carolina 23-21 as the Reapers tie this hockey game on a power play goal from Don Oliveri. Face off will be to the blocker side of Austin Watts. It's won by the Bulls and they'll just kill some time by squirting this one out to center and that's where the horn sounds. Through 40 minutes of play, we are square even here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. The Carolina Reapers two and the Birmingham Bulls two. Shots on goal in the second period. For Carolina, eight and a game total of 21. And for the Birmingham Bulls, they come away with a whopping 14 and a game total of 23. On the scoreboard, it's even. We'll bring you back into the broadcast booth with our second period intermission report right after these messages. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Hey, hey you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Welcome to Freddy's. How are you guys doing? Meetings. Lunch meetings all week. All salads. Bean salads. Quinoa salads. Heirloom salads. Frisee salads. Sometimes a guy needs a Freddy's original double, Chicago dog, and a turtle sundae. Make that two, please. Three. Absolutely. If it's going to be bad, it better be good. Being bad never tasted this good. 
Freddy's, the experience that puts a smile on your face and the taste that brings you back. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. At Carolina's Dentist and Spring Lake Oral Surgery, we believe in creating a positively different experience. We are proud to serve Eastern North Carolina, including Fayetteville, Spring Lake, and Rayford. We use the best in dental technique and technology to make Carolina's Dentist your one-stop shop for quality dental care and oral care. Book your appointment today to come experience the Carolina's Dentist difference. Hey, it's Goldie from Good Morning Fayetteville for St. Peter Pest Control. They've been doing my pest control services all summer, and it's been wonderful not to have to deal with ants or mosquitoes the last few months. All that money I saved in calamine lotion. Ray and Preston St. Peter show up, they spray outside, but they also do in-home pest control. So if you have roaches or, dare I say, rodents, they'll take care of them as well because the last thing you need is unwanted visitors making a nest in your Christmas decorations up in the attic. Call St. Peter Pest Control. They send all your bugs and pests to see St. Peter. Well, folks, this has been a night to remember here in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and we haven't even finished the hockey game yet. The Carolina Reapers tie things up with the Birmingham Bulls on the power play in the second period, and that's a huge goal. As we told you throughout the course of that period, it felt like whoever was to score next is going to garner a lot of momentum, and the Reapers are the team to do that on the power plays. Now they have three power play goals and four tries this weekend against the Birmingham Bulls. Don Oliveri with his second goal of the weekend rips one from the top of the near side face-off circle, beats Austin Lotz cleanly. Oliveri's goal is a massive one. And the reason is, not only does it tie the hockey game, but it also gives your group a little bit of momentum. Now, the Reapers didn't do a ton with it as the goal came 17-31 into the second period. They gave up some chances late in that period to the Birmingham Bulls. Mike Davis shut down in front on a good stop from Brent Moran. But I really liked the way Carolina showed some character late in that period, had an opportunity, and got the job done. We also got to see some fisticuffs as Brian Moore dropped the gloves with Jake Papalardo. Papalardo, an unwilling combatant, only drew a two-minute roughing call as Brian Moore is fortunate to stay in the hockey game. He receives the fighting major. And the Marks, or excuse me, rather, the Reapers able to use a little bit of momentum garnered from that fight. And I think that is one of the reasons, at least, they're able to get a little bit of added extra energy down the stretch here. That's a big-time goal. And now it comes down to the final 20 minutes where the Reapers have had some good luck this season. Birmingham has not been known as a team that is strong in the finish of hockey games. But it's right there for the taking for both of these two squads. As we told you, the Bulls have their playoff hopes on life support. We'll go to the out-of-town scoreboard later on during the second period intermission to check out what's going on in Roanoke as the rail yard dogs and the Bulls following each other as closely as possible with both groups in action tonight. The Macon Mayhem are in Roanoke, and the rail yard dogs got just their second win in their last 10 tries last night over Macon in a fashion of 6-1. But Greg Hussey is between the pipes tonight for Macon. And Hussey has been playing some really good hockey down the stretch of the year for the Mayhem. We'll see how things shake out there in a moment. As it stands here, it's a 2-2 tie. Birmingham out shooting Carolina 23-21. But the Reapers are able to tie things up. And we're dead even going into the final 20 minutes. 
Coming up after this break, we'll welcome you back into the broadcast booth and we'll answer some of your questions, one of them pertaining to the Carolina Reapers and the rebrand night. This is Reapers Hockey. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Hey, hey you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Welcome to Freddy's. How are you guys doing? Meetings. Lunch meetings all week. All salads. Bean salads. Quinoa salads. Heirloom salads. Frisee salads. Sometimes a guy needs a Freddy's original double, Chicago dog, and a turtle sundae. Make that two, please. Three. Absolutely. If it's going to be bad, it better be good. Being bad never tasted this good. Freddy's, the experience that puts a smile on your face and the taste that brings you back. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy-duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Carolina's Dentists offers the best in oral care and technology. Hope you're brushing twice a day like we discussed. And don't forget to make that six month appointment, okay? We'd like to keep those pretty white teeth looking good for you. Come experience positively different dentistry at Carolina's Dentist, the official dentist of the Fayetteville Marksman. Baby, we have spiders on every corner outside our house. Okay, I'll call someone to take care of it. Baby. We have fire ants all over the yard. All righty, I'll call someone else to take care of that. Baby, these mosquitoes, you have got to go. Uh, here we go again. One call to St. Peter Pest Control provides all these services. Total pest protection for one low monthly payment. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Welcome back to Fayetteville, North Carolina. Drew Blevins alongside you on the Reapers Radio Network. Time for our Ask the Voice segment where we endeavor to answer some of your questions about the game of hockey or the Carolina Reapers. If you want to have one of your questions answered on a future edition of Ask the Voice, all you have to do is email me at dblevins at marksmanhockey.com. That's D B L E V. I-N-S at marksmanhockey.com with your name, where you're listening from, and a good question about the organization or about the game of hockey. Our first question comes from Martha, who is listening in Red Springs, North Carolina. Martha wants to know, what was the reason behind wanting to rebrand the team? And what's the future of the Carolina Reapers brand? Great question, Martha. And the future hasn't been determined yet. I can tell you that the conversation has been that there will be a Carolina Reapers night every night during the Fayetteville Marksman season from now on. But a lot of the inspiration, as we told you in the first period intermission, came from the former play-by-play -play voice 
Sean Bednard, who is now with the Erie Otters in the OHL. But Sean's idea blossomed, and I think speaking from personal experience from me, Sean's idea inspired me to do what I do here in, in working with the graphics and the social media and the design and the game feel and also here in broadcasting. There's been a lot of work put into this by the entirety of the front office from the team president Alex Wall to the ticket associates Carl Lowe and Joey Hewitt, the director of game day operations Macy Curry and myself. And we're just proud to have an idea and have brought it to life. When I started here in May overlapping with Sean, he inspired me with a passion for this reband project. And it's really blossomed into something that's a lot of fun because it almost felt like it was a project that fell into my lap and one that I took very seriously and just altogether tremendously proud of the work done by the Marksman organization to rebrand for this one night and really make fans feel like they're in a Carolina Reapers home game and they've been invested, they've been into the brand. It's just been so, so much fun. but. The history looks like it will not be over at the end of the night this evening. There should be a Carolina Reapers night on the schedule from now until the end of Marksman Hockey, which does not seem to be anytime soon, and we're so excited to be able to bring the band brand back and continue to build on the project that Sean's idea started and one that we're very happy to carry on. And our other question tonight comes from Dale, who's listening out in Youngsville, North Carolina. And Dale wants to know, when you look at the Marksman road trip upcoming, how successful do they need to be to hop up a spot in the standings? And this is a good question. Dale, I, I don't know what the future holds for the Marksman in terms of seating. And the reason is they only get one head-to-head -head matchup in one weekend, two games in total against the Huntsville Havoc of a team that's above them. That'll be a really good litmus test, I think, to see where this group is down the stretch of the season. But it all kind of depends on what Peoria and Knoxville do as well. And, and there's just no guarantee that those teams win out or lose out. So it, it's more important, I think, for this organization to focus on their controllables, taking things a game at a time as best they can. And we'll see what the future holds. If I were a betting man, and I'm not because I've been wrong far too many times, I would say it takes four out of five wins on the road trip to make you really confident that you're going to be in the race for third. But again, it, it depends on what Peoria, Knoxville, and Huntsville do. And at the end of the day, it, it could just be too little too late for the Reapers and the Marksmen. And we'll see what the future holds. But pivotal games coming up in the next two weekends. So thank you so much to Martha, and thank you to Dale for their questions. If you want to have one of your questions answered on a future edition of Ask the Voice, all you have to do is email me at dblevins, that's D-B-L-E-V-I-N-S, at marksmanhockey.com with your name, where you're listening from, and a good question about the team or the game of hockey. We'll go around the SPHL after these messages. This is Carolina Reapers Hockey. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Hey. Hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Welcome to Freddy's. How are you guys doing? Meetings. Lunch meetings all week, all salads. Bean salads. Quinoa salads. Heirloom salads. Frise salads. Sometimes a guy needs a Freddy's original double, Chicago dog, and a turtle sundae. Make that two, please. Three. Absolutely. If it's gonna be bad, it better be good. Being bad never tasted this good. Freddy's, the experience that puts a smile on your face and the taste that brings you back. 
Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light Legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. For the final time during this second period intermission report, we welcome you back to the Crown Coliseum. Drew Blevins with you right here in Fayetteville. The Carolina Reapers to the Birmingham Bulls to. Let's go for a spin around the SPHL. Heading into the second period, the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs have a 1-0 lead on the make in mayhem. Evansville and Quad City dropping the puck in about 10 minutes in a big game for the Thunderbolts as they try to hop up and catch Pensacola for sixth, Quad City chasing down Carolina for fourth in the league. Also dropping the puck in 10 minutes, the Huntsville Havoc taking on the Peoria Rivermen as Carolina will closely watch what happens in that contest. A Peoria loss coupled with a Reapers win would mean the Reapers are just two points out of third place in the league and the nightcap, the Vermilion County Bobcats and the Pensacola Ice Flyers from the David S. Palmer Arena. 2-2, the score here in Carolina. Third period, puck drop is next. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Hey, hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Welcome to Freddy's. How are you guys doing? Meetings. Lunch meetings all week, all salads. Bean salads. Quinoa salads. Heirloom salads. Frise salads. Sometimes a guy needs a Freddy's original double, Chicago dog, and a turtle sundae. Make that two, please. Three. Absolutely. If it's gonna be bad, it better be good. Being bad never tasted this good. Freddy's, the experience that puts a smile on your face and the taste that brings you back. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Third period puck drop time here from Fayetteville, North Carolina as the Carolina Reapers and the Birmingham Bulls will determine a winner in these final 20 minutes or the final five if overtime or a shootout is needed. And away we go with Miles Harvey taking the puck back for Carolina standing directly in back of Brent Moran. These two teams have played nearly an even contest, splitting chances back and forth. They're dead even through 40 minutes. In the far side corner, crashing for the puck here and looking for an opportunity was Fraze. Instead, Birmingham will take it up the near side boards. This is Carson Rose who will dump it in. Miles Harvey there for Carolina. will send it to Drake Glover who dumps it into the near side corner around the boards. Brody Duncan will take the puck. Duncan 
dropped behind the play as Dave Nippert will backhand to Sam Storman. Storman scored from this location earlier. Centers, they score. Driving in front for the Bulls and putting the puck in the back of the net is Dave Nippert. And 50 seconds into the third period, Birmingham takes the lead 3-2. Nippert on a good drive to the front will have his ninth of the season from Sam Storman who fed him. And the Reapers find themselves with the air let out of their sails. They'll need to work quickly to get back in this one. Hard hit laid by Oliveri as he drops his man. Knocks the puck free to Taylor McCloy. McCloy dispossessed by Holm. Here's a drive that goes over top the net by Oliveri. Good play made here by Brian Moore. He fires Lots with a save. The rebound tied up in the skates of Taylor Best as Lots got drawn behind the net. Birmingham survives. McCloy takes the puck. He puts it in space. Far side corner. This is Taylor Best. Pressured by Holm. Gives up the puck, but it's caught by Oliveri. Plays to his own stick legally. Uncorks the slap shot. Swallowed by Lots. 90 seconds to go in the third period. Birmingham leading Carolina 3-2 on the Dave Nipper goal from Sam Storman, who has two points in this one. Face-off will be to the blocker side of Lots, won by the Reapers as Cup slams it off the inboards. Carolina behind the net to grab it. Circling here is Tyler Barrow, who has one in this one already. Taken by Reamers, who coughs the puck up to Jordan Martin. He feeds it too far for Scotty Donahue as the Reapers reset, but Barrow unable to hold the puck as Cass feeds the far side defenseman. That's Gerska, who will dump it in off the stick of McTavish. Moran shoots it around the glass. Jordan Martin using the body to hold the line. In the near side corner, Martin peels away with it. He's crunched on the inboards. Jarrett Cup comes to find it. One free as Donahue clubs it over top of the net. This will be picked up by Carolina. Tyler Barrow with a cross ice pass, and it's a good one, but it's just too hard off the stick of Reamers. Skated back up ice by Donahue, who will bury his head trying to work around Barrow. He's forced to the end wall and circles around the net to the far boards. Drops it off here for a quick snap wrister. It's taken by McTavish, knocked down by Moran. The Bulls reset. Sam Storman now. He fires a low wrist shot. Big rebound in front. Moran finds it, and he'll melt it. Brent Moran has been under siege most of the evening as the Bulls have been the team to jump all over the Reapers here in the opening portions of this third period. 17-24 to go in regulation. Dave Nippert has the difference-making goal to this point. Colton Bates will take the draw against Drake Glover, and Glover wins it for the Reapers as they'll work up through center. Dumped in by Tanner Fraze as he'll send FX Girard to go bang bodies for the puck. Girard wins it to Fraze, whose cross-check survives it. Finds FX Girard behind the net. He's overtaken by Holm as Mark Wilson will grab the puck at center. Into the skates of Miles Harvey on the near side boards. He'll pitch it forward for Drake Glover to dump it in. Austin Lotz will catch it and hang on for a whistle. That's a win for the Reapers right there, 3-0-1 into this third period as they get back to a spot they're much more comfortable in attacking zone draw. And they can bring out a new group to keep the pressure and they're attacking in. Best with McCloy and Brian Moore, the group will come out for the Reapers. As the home team, Carolina has last change, but critically, a face-off won by Dave Nippert, and the Bulls try to break it out off the far boards. They're able to get it to the red line, but Harrison Harper will dump it right back in. High in the air, it banks off the end wall. Birmingham resets. The breakout pass to Jake Cass as he'll spring Nippert, who gets around Oliveri. Nippert driving in, wraps it around, has it in the near corner, will lead for Jake Cass, the defenseman. Cass deep in the zone, centered off of Papalardo, sticking wide. Bulls come back to find possession here. Papalardo rips one, stopped by Brent Moran as this will bounce back behind the net to Harrison Harper. 
Feeds it to the far side half wall as he was trying to hit more. That'll spring a chance for McCloy. He overskates the puck as Huffnagel pitches it forward. Aaron Huffnagel holding his own clear end. Huffnagel in the near side corner, backhands to the slot. Off the stick of Jordan Martin as he lost his footing, but the marksman, excuse me, the Reaper's unable to clear. Oliveri wanted a penalty as losing his helmet on the play was Martin. So the helmet will be picked up by Kyle, or excuse me, by Noah Ackerman, the far linesman, given back to the Birmingham bench. We'll keep playing here. All the way around, down the far side boards. That's Bates, loses possession of the puck. Here comes Carolina. Driving with it here is Biesinger as he dropped a pass for, I believe that was Cup. Fumbled with it for a moment, but the Reapers hold the zone. Long wrist shot, floats in onto Cup, and he'll melt it. 15-31 to go in the third period. Birmingham leading Carolina 3-2. And the faceoff will go to the glove hand side of Austin Lotz, who's been a gem in this hockey game for Birmingham. Faceoff won by the Bulls initially, but the Reapers will hold the line, dumped in off the high glass. Behind the net, Biesinger scoops it to Tyler Barrow, up to the point. This eludes the stick of Jarrett Cup. Nearly overtaken, Cup strong on his skates, just forces a clear in as the rookie defenseman Andrew Lane is tied up behind the cage. Lane from his own end, coughs up the puck as Carson Rose is all over him. Rose, looking up to the point, finds Gerska, who will dump it into the far side corner. Picked up instead by Tommy Biesinger, a one-touch pass to Jarrett Cup, and the Reapers are back out to center. A cross-ice pass to Barrow, who opened the scoring in this hockey game. He dumps it in, sending Cup to crash for it. Jarrett Cup. The defenseman deep in the rush. He's been known to be offensive at times in his career. This line is held by Miles Harvey. Dumps it in as he finds a way to get it to Matt McNair in the near side corner. McNair trying to work it back up to the point. He gets hog tied, still digging for the puck as it will scoot to the near side corner. And Birmingham gives it up to Dave Nipper. A cross ice pass will get it out to center. This is Aaron Huffnagel. Has Papalardo going with him. Huffnagel is rocked by Mark Wilson. FX Girard scoops up the loose change. And the St. Lazare Quebec native is able to get it out through center, but not with possession. Birmingham clubs it right back in, 14-10 to go in regulation. Reapers trailing the Bulls 3-2. Digging for it here is Jordan Martin. Martin for Birmingham, unable to hold his line. As the Reapers get it to the point, Storman rips it. This is blocked by McNair, feeds the far wing for FX Girard, trying to drive around Brody Duncan, he cannot. Storman now, crunched by McNair. Puck jostles free, Brody Duncan has it. McNair finds FX Girard, a backhanded pass up to the point. Held for a moment here by Harrison Harper, he fires a shot, kicked out by Lotz. Storman to the rebound, the Bulls survive to center. Taken ahead by Scotty Donahue, who will drive to the far wing. He centers for McTavish, partial two on one, but the pass intended for Jordan Martin is too far behind him, and the Reapers assume possession here. Harrison Harper, held without a goal all season, drives it up ice, six assists for the defensively-minded defenseman. Drops it to the point, and the Reapers are offside as Oliveri fielded the pass just millimeters into center ice. 13-18 to go in the third period. Birmingham three, Carolina two. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Crowd on pins and needles here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. The Carolina Reapers and the Birmingham Bulls have treated us to a dandy here on Saturday night in Fayetteville. But the Reapers need to find one to tie as they trail 3-2 with 13-10 to go in the third period as Mike Gerska will dump this one into the near side corner. Mike Davis, the Bulls captain, will find Colton Bates in the far corner. Sweeps it ahead for Gerska and back to the far face off circle for Bates. His wrist shot blocked on the way through and the Reapers are able to get it out to the red line no further as Colton Bates dumps it back in. 
Round to Brent Moran, Jarrett Cup, veteran defenseman, will skate it ahead. Cup slides to the near wing for Brian Moore, looking to dump it in, had the puck taken off of his stick by Cass. Pitched ahead, but turned over. Now a chance for McCloy, backdoor pass, they score! Taylor Best ties it for the Larksman! What a feed, what a finish! A Taylor-made connection! McCloy to best. The Reapers tie the game. A momentum shifting marker. As the goal will come 623 into the third period. What a goal from Best, and what a find by McCloy. This is Reamers for Carolina. Dumps it behind the net, looking for a little help here. Reapers have led in this game only once after the first goal. This one's the captain, McCloy, as the puck rolls in on to Moran, who will cover it with 12.09 to go in the third period. Taylor McCloy with his 18th goal of the season from Taylor Best, who will have his 24th assist on the year. We'll see if the Reapers can build off of that. What a hockey play. Face off to the glove side of Moran and the Reapers end. It's won by Birmingham. The Bulls will take it in the near side corner. This is Scotty Donahue. Gives up to the point as he was looking for Button. It's a free clear for Carolina all the way down. Austin Lotz onto the puck. Feeds it to the far side wing. A head man look goes over the stick of Jordan Martin. This is going to go over the stick of everybody. Harrison Harper races back to his own end to grab it. Reapers will break it out to the near side boards. It's a two on two if they hurry as Freeze opts to dump it in and go to chase for himself. Bangs bodies with Mike Gerska as Glover got a stick to it, nearly blocked the breakout pass. As it stands, Martin's back beyond center. Long wrist shot, challenges Moran. He punches it out. Is coming to find the puck is FX Sherrard to Drake Glover. He pitches it off the linesman on the far side, and he'll go to chase it himself. Glover gets under the stick of Gerska, and Davis has to come find the puck for Birmingham. He had man's up ice, two on two for the Bulls. This is the rookie Carson Rose driving in, shielded away by Jarrett Cup. He centers off the stick of Moran as two players crash into the far side goal post. Moran got tied up in the traffic, and we'll make sure everybody gets up okay from this. 11.03 to go in the third period, 3-3, the Reapers and the Bulls tied. It was Mike Davis and Taylor McCloy who wrecked each other at the far side goalpost. Colton Bates will take the draw for Birmingham against the Reaper captain, Taylor McCloy. Face off is won by Birmingham. Storman bounces one wide of the far post. Taylor Best who's tied the game, tries to pitch it out unsuccessfully. He'll get it out only to the red line on the third try. A cross ice pass for Sam Storman will be dumped in from the near red line. Coming back to grab it is Andrew Lane. Lane cycles up the far side boards, pitched it right into the body of Taylor Best. He'll send this puck fluttering down just beside the goal crease. This will be icing against the Reapers with 10.36 to go in the third period. So another defensive zone draw coming for Carolina. As the Reapers ever since tying the game feel like they've been hemmed into their defensive zone. That's, that's Birmingham and Corey Melkert has talked often about how the team just works and Birmingham is a team that works and they've been really good as of late. It's just the puck hasn't bounced their way this season. I mean, when you look there, one and five in overtime so far this year, that's tough. 
Here's a break for the Reapers. Driving in Brian Moore. He was edged out on the far side by Troy Button. Button will get to the puck here for Birmingham and skate behind of Austin Lotz looking to reset. That's where Brian Moore is at his most dangerous. Coming down either wing with speed. We've seen him victimize so many opponents that way. South of 10 minutes to go in the third period. This pass is turned over as the Reapers touch up. They're right back into the attacking zone pressuring. Barrow delivers a hard hit to Troy Button as Holmes unable to get it out. Noah Holmes. Toe drags behind of Austin Lotz using the net as a screen. He'll find Button. Jordan Martin will receive a pass at the red line. He'll split the defense, loses the puck. This is Harvey. Touches it off the near side boards. Donahue holds the line to Jordan Martin. Trying to get around the diving Mark Wilson and does. Behind the net to McTavish. He centers for a one-timer from the far faceoff circle. Shut down by Moran and he'll cover. 9-16 to go in the third period from Fayetteville. It's a good one between the Reapers and the Bulls. We're tied at three. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Welcome back to the Sand Hills of North Carolina. Nearing springtime, and this one has been hotly contested between the Carolina Reapers and the Birmingham Bulls. Faceoff will be to the far side goalpost in the Reapers zone. Birmingham out shooting Carolina 31-25. Reapers goal scorers are Tyler Barrow, Don Oliveri, and most recently, Taylor Best. The Reapers win the draw, but this puck is taken away. Bounced right in front as knocked from the puck is the captain of the Bulls, Mike Davis. Seems like Craig Simchuk wants to start every sequence he can with this group out there. McNair had his stick wrapped around his body, unable to forge ahead of the red line as everybody will reset directly behind of Brent Moran. 8.50 to go in the third period, 3-3, the Reapers and the Bulls tied up. Matt McNair down the far side board, centers for Drake Glover, makes a move to his backhand, now crashing in for the puck as McNair backhands it off the outside of the net. Lots looking for the rebound and he's got it. 8.37 to go in this third period, a good chance for Carolina. As Glover and McNair create the opportunity, same group will stay out. It's Birmingham. Wants a new look. Nippard, Huffnagel, Storman. With Brody Duncan and Jake Papalardo, the group that will be out for Birmingham. Moore, McCloy, Best. With Harper and Oliveri, the group for the Reapers. Face off one forward by McCloy. He'll go chasing after it as Storman gets tied up in the near side corner. Rolls all the way around to Papalardo as he feeds it up to the red line, looking for Huffnagel. The pass intercepted by Harper with a well-placed stick. Taylor Best, a rookie sensation in his own right, drives down the near side wing. Off angle wrist shot, caught against the blocker side shoulder of Austin Lutz, he'll hang on. Face off will stay to the blocker side of Lutz. The Reapers trying to shift momentum in their favor. McCloy will toe in for the draw here. Tries to poke it forward. He and Best jogging for it, unable to find possession, as this is Donahue grinding against his man to dump it in down the far boards. Jarrett Cup there for the Reapers. 
Sends it to the near side half wall. Brian Moore had it for a moment, lost it off of his forehand to the point button. Scoops it on net, rebound, squirts right to Jarrett Cup for Carolina. Off the far side boards, this will be dumped ahead as John driving for the puck. Here is Brian Moore. Moore circles around the net to the far side corner. It's on edge. He'll settle with his skate. Brian Moore, long wrist shot, tipped, they score! Taylor Best gives the Reapers the lead, 4-3, late in the third. Good things happen when you throw the puck at the net. The best things happen when 19 standing in front. 4-3 Carolina. Brian Moore will have his second assist of the contest. And for the first time since the first period, the Carolina Reapers have the lead. Time of this goal will be 12.32 into the third period. Taylor Best from Brian Moore. Zach Reamers is also going to get a helper on the play. As into the near side corner, this puck bounces in the Birmingham end. Birmingham centers in front, whacked at. Moran seals himself to the far post, south of seven minutes to go, and the Reapers are back out beyond their own blue line. Tyler Barrow circles back with the puck as he'll find Mark Wilson, who will pitch it all the way ahead. This was tip no icing. Austin Lotz will play it himself all the way ahead to Huffnangle, two on one defensively. Aaron Huffnangle will drop for Papalardo, bumped off the puck by Gerard. This will be handled by Harrison Harper. He gets tripped up. This will be a penalty, and the Reapers will go to the St. Peter Pest Control power play. Penalty will go against Dave Nippard. And Birmingham with what very well could be a self-inflicted wound here late in the third period. Time of this penalty will be 13.31 into the final frame of regulation. Reapers have already scored once on the power play. They're three for four this weekend to the man advantage. But a good start for Birmingham as they'll rim it around. And the Reapers will reset at center. Don Oliveri back with Tommy B. Singer. Brian Moore, Drake Glover, and Tanner Fraze complete the power play complement for the Reapers. Fraze in the far side corner. Picks up the puck, played behind the net for Glover, who tried to wrap it. Lost the puck off his forehand. This will be cleared all the way down. Brent Moran wants to hustle the play up to Moore. He says, I don't think so, and he'll drop it back for Don Oliveri. Backhanded pass to Biesinger, who will start his engine. 45 seconds gone by in the St. Peter Pest Control power play for Carolina. Glover will set it up for Oliveri. He'll quarterback the power play to Brian Moore at the near side point. Moore nearly overtaken, using that reach, trying to hold the line. He can't, as Mike Davis does yeoman's work just to get that out to the red line. Moore will reset. A cross-ice pass goes through the legs of Gerska. Oliveri the first in. He'll backhand to the point. Reapers have to be careful not to take a too many men on the ice call and superb understanding of the situation by Tyler Barrow who held up from getting on the ice with Fraze coming off. 40 seconds to go on the man advantage for the Reapers. This will be skated ahead and dumped in by Taylor Best. Best crashing in the near side corner for it. He'll get some help behind the net from Barrow. Best laying on the puck pressured by Troy Button. Barrow will get it, sweeps it all the way over for Andrew Lane, the fellow rookie. Now Barrow, across for Reamers at the top of the near circle. He fires over top the crossbar. Lane hustling to the far boards. Can't hold the line as he resets at center. A bouncing puck at the Reaper attacking blue line. They're onside. Best makes a move, backhands to Barrow, sweeps at the puck. It's high up in the air. Birmingham gets to it. Off the near side glass. This one's out. Nippert standing in the penalty box. He's out. We return to five on five hockey. 4.26 to go in the third period. Reapers four, Bulls three. Dumped in by Carolina. Is chasing the puck here is McCloy. 
Beat out by Jake Cass, who will backhand to the far sideboards. This will be pitched up by Birmingham up to center, where the Reapers will take it at their own blue line. Carolina's got it up the near sideboards, driven in only for a moment by McNair. He stops and starts getting the puck beyond the blue line, backhanding it below the attacking goal line. Played behind the net by Cass, who you see here. Jake Cass from the near side face-off circle, feeds it all the way across for Mike Gerska. Gerska dumps it in down the far boards, all the way around the kick plate, but we're gonna get a whistle, and that may have been a play offside. Nope, they're gonna say that did just hit the bottom of the protective netting. So the puck shot out of play brings us to our final media timeout. 3.50 to go in this one. Reapers leading 4-3. Welcome to Freddy's. How are you guys doing? Meetings. Lunch meetings all week, all salads. Bean salads. Quinoa salads. Heirloom salads. Frise salads. Sometimes a guy needs a Freddy's original double, Chicago dog, and a turtle sundae. Make that two, please. Three. Absolutely. If it's gonna be bad, it better be good. Being bad never tasted this good. Freddy's, the experience that puts a smile on your face and the taste that brings you back. Three fifty to go in the third period here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. The Carolina Reapers leading the Birmingham Bulls 4-3 in front of a raucous crowd on a Saturday night in the Sand Hills. This will be a mad dash to the finish. Reapers win the draw from center. Gerard dumps it in and is nearly checked into the Birmingham bench. In the far side corner, Sam Storman picks up the puck, backhands it at the far side faceoff circle. It's intercepted by Gerard. FX Gerard circles at the far side faceoff circle. Drops to the point for a long shot from Cup. Blocked in front. Big shot and a huge stop by Lotz as he robs Fraze at the far post. Birmingham clears at the length of the rink. It's shy of the goal line and a hard hit delivered by Jordan Martin in the far corner. Reapers get to it. Matt McNair slides around two bulls. He's got Button to beat with a well placed stick. Troy Button will play it ahead to Colton Bates. Bates drives ahead of his attacking blue line. Low wrist shot, handcuffs Moran. Puck is loose. Reapers trying to sweep it out. Everybody hacking and whacking at it. Rose spins it off of the body and it bounces back out to center. South of three minutes remaining in the contest as this will be played ahead by Taylor Best. He's racing for it, but a calm play made by Jake Cass who came over to sweep up the loose change. Cass will dump it directly behind of Austin Lotz. That's where Noah Holm will drop it for Jake Cass and get off for a change. 2.30 to go in the third period, 4-3 Reapers. Cass will drop it back and receives it one more time. Given up to Scotty Donahue, the Bulls are offside. They have to touch up and they haven't yet. Now they do as the Reapers have it on the near side boards. Brian Moore using his big frame to shield away Jordan Martin. Moore will now use Miles Harvey as a screen as two towers of human beings Hold the puck. Now to Mark Wilson on the far side boards. Wilson, watch the stick fly out of Martin's hands as he was battling for it. This will bounce right between his legs. Looking for it, here's Mike Davis. He's got to get off on a change. Two minutes to go on the hockey game. Dumped in by Taylor McCloy. Right behind of Austin Lotz, who's out of his net to play it. We'll keep an eye on him. Lotz looking at the bench, wandering out of his goal crease. Craig Simchuk watching along. Here's Papalardo toward the net, caught and held on to by Brent Moran. Austin Lotz will wander toward the bench. And the Bulls will pull their netminder. Craig Simchuk and Kevin Kerr have their timeout should they choose to use it. 101 seconds for the Carolina Reapers to hang on. Everybody wandering, and now a timeout by Birmingham. We put this game on reset for you during the timeout break. It was Tyler Barrow to open the scoring, but Sam Storman tied the hockey game. Then Carson Rose gave the Bulls the lead. Don Oliveri late in the second period tied us up. But early in the third, Dave Nippard scoring, driving the net just 50 seconds into the period. The Reapers would find momentum. Taylor Best driving the net in an odd man rush scores. And then 
tips in a shot from Brian Moore. 12-32 into the third period. That's the go-ahead goal for now. The Reapers will break the timeout huddle first. Followed by Birmingham, and we'll see if Craig Simchuk will send out his top group first or wait for a late game rush. He'll push all his chips to the table now with Rose and Davis on the ice. Reapers win the draw. This is sent all the way around. Empty net chance for Biesinger. He's in a foot race for it. Turned over in front, but Biesinger tripped up. Will keep going. Spun toward the empty net by Harvey. It's blocked and is out of play. The faceoff will come to the near side circle in the Birmingham end. How was that not a tripping penalty at the far side goal post? Birmingham may have dodged one there. Five on five with Lotz returning to the net. Faceoff one on goal as Lotz looks behind him. Papalardo will shovel to Sam Storman. Lots wandering out of the net. Storman passes to Papalardo. He's ahead of center. There goes Lots. Dumped in around the kick plate. Is holding on to it here is Colton Bates. Bates pressured. Gives the puck away to Glover. He in turn turns it over. Carson Rose feeds it up to the point. Storman with a one-timer wide of the far post. Colton Bates onto the rebound here. Wilson pressuring him. Feeds Storman. Sam Storman walks, gives right back to Bates, feeds it to the far side corner, settled, turned in front, Moran says no, and covers. A big stop by the former Dallas Stars draft pick. It's Brett Moran stands firm right along the goal line. 51 seconds remain in the hockey game. The Reapers clean to a 4-3 lead. Face-offs have not been kind to Carolina in this game. Taylor McCloy will face off against Colton Bates, and Bates wins it cleanly back, but it splits the defense. Storman hustling back. He's watched closely by FX Girard. Girard all over Storman. Coughs it up to the bench side boards. Birmingham will take it as Davis dumps it in. He's got Bates. Pitch forward. Moran makes the save, but the rebound goes in. Carson Rose. Drives to the far post. We're tied with 34 seconds to go in the third period. The Carolina Reapers give one up late. And Craig Simchuk and the Birmingham Bulls elated on the bench as if they can hold on for 34 more seconds, they're gonna steal a standings point on the road. A momentum shift in goal. Colton Bates will take the draw against Taylor McCloy at center. McCloy tied up off the draw. Birmingham will win it. 30 seconds to go in regulation. Rose content just to dump this one in. Looking up ice with it here is Miles Harvey. Gives, but Jake Cass is there in front. 15 seconds to go. A headman look to McCloy who will chip it in a round of Jake Cass. A quick glance up at the clock. It says 10 seconds to go in the third period. Reapers with light pressure here. They'll get back as Birmingham chips this one up in the air. Rolling puck will be settled at the red line. Taylor Best has it in the neutral zone. Dumps it in. We are heading to overtime. Carson Rose ties the hockey game with 34 seconds remaining in it. Both teams secure a standings point in the SPHL table. We'll bring you overtime after this. 
Baby, we have spiders on every corner outside our house. Okay, I'll call someone to take care of it. Baby, we have fire ants all over the yard. All righty, I'll call someone else to take care of that. Baby, these mosquitoes, you have got to go. Uh, here we go again. One call to St. Peter Pest Control provides all these services. Total pest protection for one low monthly payment. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Welcome back to Fayetteville, North Carolina. The Carolina Reapers and the Birmingham Bulls have played each other to a 4-4 deadlock. Goaltenders will trade ends. Brent Moran to our left. Austin Lotz skating to the goal to our right. Taylor Best with Brian Moore and Don Oliveri will be the group out for the Carolina Reapers. It'll be the captain, Mike Davis, for the Birmingham Bulls with Jake Papillardo and Jake Cass. We'll play three on three for five minutes. If someone scores, they take the bonus point. If no one scores, we'll go to a shootout. Here's a takedown and a tripping call against the Reapers right off the faceoff. Ron Morello has called four penalties all game. And Don Oliveri, with confusion written on his face, wants to know why. Moore will sit for tripping. So the Reapers will go to the Freddies penalty kill. Birmingham has not scored on the man advantage in this one. They had a power play goal yesterday, a lot of open ice. It's a four on three power play here in overtime. Cass feeds it to the far side wing, gets it right back to Carson Rose who fumbles with the puck. Jarrett Cup is there. Sweeps it all the way around to the far side corner. Birmingham will hold the line. Rose to the point. Davis, fans on it. McCloy's got it. He's back one-on-one -on -one against Jake Cass. Pushes to the outside. He's held up. Wanted an interference call and will get none. Mike Davis will reset for the Birmingham Bulls. Carried into the zone by Sam Storman. Spins away from pressure and will find Davis. Davis probing, gives to Storman. He pulls the trigger, misses wide. Harvey onto the rebound here for Carolina as he'll sweep it to the near side corner. Jarrett Cup on the backhand, unable to get it out cleanly, but this is going to bounce out over Storm and Stick. A minute to go in the more minor. Miles Harvey will stay out there. He's the furthest up ice as Storman will find Carson Rose. Rose with Donahue coming down the near side wing. will drop and set for Stam Storman. Storman back for Rose. He shoots, blocked in the way through as the Reapers will clear to the far side boards around Storman. 40 seconds to go on the Moore Minor. Sam Storman dancing at the red line will find Jordan Martin. Martin carries it in as he works to the far boards awaiting reinforcements. He'll drop it back as Papalardo, excuse me rather, Gerska gives in front. This one off Moran's stick to the back glass. Line held by Gerska. 20 seconds to go in the kill effort for Carolina. Turning with it here is Bates, sets up a one-timer in front, tipped on the way through as the Reapers get to it, cleared up the dasher and out to the red line. 10 seconds to go in the Moore Minor. He's leaning on the glass, just begging to be let out. Gerska fires a wrist shot low. A wrap chance here for Jordan Martin. Martin's gonna feed up to the point. We go back to even strength four on four until the next whistle. Moore will join the play. Miles Harvey watches his man into the near side corner. Here's a pass in front, back door. Great stop by Moran on Donahue at the back door. Brian Moore will come to scoop up possession of the puck. It's a tired group out there for Birmingham. Moore's going to take it himself. He's got Basinger driving with him. Moore, toe drags, lost possession. It'll be taken by Gerska, who feeds the far wing. 2.29 to go in overtime. Donahue. Gives to the far side wing. Here's a wrist shot off Moran's blocker side shoulder. Biesinger has the loose change. Plays it around the boards to Andrew Lane. 
Lane looking up ice. He's got more on the far side boards. He's going to stay out there. Now Don Oliveri, an offensive-minded defenseman. He makes a move but lost the puck to Jake Cass. Cass for Birmingham. Shoved as he sends it to the far side wing. Here come the Bulls. Skated ahead by Mike Davis. He toe drags. This will be dumped into the near side corner. Carson Rose is bumped there, south of two minutes to go in overtime as the Reapers peel away with the puck. This is Brian Moore hanging on to it here. Two game-winning assists in overtime this year for Carolina. Moore will slow the pace of play as he is exhausted. Finds Andrew Lane on the near side wing. Lane will touch to Oliveri. He'll lift it up ice as Biesinger starts his engine. Biesinger gets around Sam Storman. He'll wrap around the net and look for a friendly face to pass to. Tommy Biesinger. Going to hang on to the puck as he turns at the blue line. Drops his man. Sends it to the far side wing where Oliveri will look to set up. In front. This one's tipped toward the net. It never made it on goal. But the Birmingham Bulls unable to clear. Oliveri sets up the far side point. He finds Biesinger. Biesinger stick handling all the way across for Jarrett Cup. Cup will turn to Zach Reimers. Reimers hangs on to it at the middle point. Gives to Biesinger at the near faceoff circle. Biesinger watched off by Sam Storm and he'll leave it in open space for Don Oliveri. Oliveri will dump it around the kick plate behind the net as Reamers tried to one-touch it to himself. He had Biesinger there, stolen away by Birmingham, a minute to go in overtime. Sam Storman from behind his own net. Shovels to the near side wing. Here comes Birmingham up ice. Bulls driving with a puck here. Jordan Martin turns away from pressure, feeds it up for Mike Gerska. He goes across the blue line. This pass hops over everybody's stick. Back behind the net is Miles Harvey. Backhands for Jarrett Cup. Runs into his man as the Reapers will take it all the way up ice. 30 seconds to go in overtime. Driving ahead here is Miles Harvey, the former Providence Friar. He'll find Taylor Best, who has two in this game. Best knocked off the puck by Papalardo. Birmingham will take it in their own end. Gerska will drop the puck back here for Jake Cass. Feeds it to the far side boards. It's a one-touch play in front. Long wrist shot by Gerska. Swallowed by Moran with seven seconds to go in overtime. So we return to three on three with seven seconds to go in overtime. Davis wins the face off to Rose who backhands it toward the net. It's wide, right back out to the blue line. Davis spins it off of Harvey. We'll go to a breakaway competition and the shootout will determine the winner here on Carolina Reapers night. It is an international shootout format in the SPHL. Five rounds instead of three. Shooters may be recycled after the five rounds. Goaltenders go back to their own end. Whoever wins after five innings of the shootout will be the winner of the contest. They'll take a bonus point. If no one wins at the end of five innings of the shootout, we'll go to a sudden death round by round finish. This has been a dandy of an evening. The Reapers, as the home team, will have the option to shoot first or last. Corey Melkert has traditionally liked to shoot first, and he will here. Taylor Best will shoot first for Carolina. Best starts at the far face soft circle. Deeks backhand, forehand, shut down by Lotz. Birmingham will have an opportunity to take the lead in the first inning of the shootout. And they'll send the captain of the squad out to shoot. It's Mike Davis. Davis has been a thorn in the side of the Reapers all year. To the near circle, a quick wrist shot, shut down by Brent Moran. Zero, 0 through one inning of the shootout. Don Oliveri, who has scored in his last two shootout attempts, will come up next. 
He'll work to the near circle this time. On his forehand, head fake, Deeks holds and hit the goal post. Looking skyward frustrated, he drew out Austin Lotz as long as he could and ran out of real estate. To Scotty Donahue, the former Carolina Thunderbird for Birmingham. Donahue on his backhand to the far circle. Works now between the hash marks, stick handling, lost the puck and sent it wide on a last second shot. Goaltenders dominating this one as Tyler Barrow will come up next. Barrow on his backhand, works to the near circle. He's coming in with speed, lifts it, and Lotz gloved him. That was a good move with pace. But Austin Lotz stands tall. Jordan Martin in the middle round for Birmingham. Picks the puck up on his forehand, across the blue line to the near circle, backhand, forehand, tried to shovel it five hole and was knocked away by Brent Moran. Both goaltenders, three for three. And here's a chance for the Bostonian, Tommy Biesinger. He's crafty. Biesinger. Steps slowly, forehand, backhand, lifts it off the crossbar! He had lots dead to rights, and the iron is unkind tonight twice. So here's a chance for Jake Papalardo in the penultimate round of the regulation shootout. Papalardo with speed at the far circle. He stops, slows down, through the legs, he scores. The Reapers have to score to keep it going. It's Brian Moore who has the chance to put it back on Brent Moran's shoulders. He scores, we keep going, he doesn't. Reapers lose. Moore shoots and is shut down. And the Birmingham Bulls steal the bonus point on Carolina Reapers rebrand night. 5-4 the final in the shootout. A disappointing finish for Carolina in this one. But the Birmingham Bulls come away with a massive victory as they will keep their playoff hopes alive for at least an evening longer. They take the bonus point by a final count of 5-4 in the shootout. We'll be right back to put a bow on this one during Reaper's postgame. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Hey, hey you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Welcome to Freddy's. How are you guys doing? Meetings. Lunch meetings all week. All salads. Bean salads. Quinoa salads. Heirloom salads. Frisee salads. Sometimes a guy needs a Freddy's original double, Chicago dog, and a turtle sundae. Make that two, please. Three. Absolutely. If it's going to be bad, it better be good. Being bad never tasted this good. Freddy's, the experience that puts a smile on your face and the taste that brings you back. 
Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Final time on this fine Saturday evening in the Sand Hills of the great state of North Carolina. We welcome you back into the broadcast booth. The Carolina Reapers fall to the Birmingham Bulls 5-4 in a shootout. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. But let's go ahead and put this game on reset for you. This is a fantastic contest. The scoring opened by the rookie Tyler Barrow. His first professional goal assisted by Zach Reimers. Reimers would go on to have three assists in the contest for the Reapers and a really strong weekend individually for Carolina's number 11. Sam Storman tied the hockey game 9.33 into the first period. His second goal in as many games against his former team. An easy guy to pull for is Sam Storman. And... It's one of those things that Storman's shot is either one that he researched on Brent Moran from having practice against him, or he just caught Moran in an awkward situation because put quite plainly and simply, that puck can't go in through the arm of Brent Moran and one he'd certainly like to have back. You didn't think that was going to be a goal that was going to make much of a difference so early in the contest, but Carson Rose would drive at the far side corner, fire one that bounces off of Moran and tucks in between his leg pad and the goal post, an emphatic goal call from Ron Morello after a long pause where Rose was the only one who saw it go in. Don Oliveri would tie the hockey game deep in the second period on the power play with a bomb. Oliveri has now scored in back-to-back -back games on the power play. And the Reapers look to carry some momentum going into the third period, but that was all squashed when David Nipper drove the net and finished on a feed from Sam Storman, who finished with two points. Nipper, scoring his ninth of the season, made it 3-2, but Carolina comes back. It's Taylor Best scoring on an odd man rush off the feed from Taylor McCloy. That tied the game, and then Bess would deflect a shot from Brian Moore that would give the Reapers the lead. Deep down into the third period we go, after the Reapers were unable to convert on a late game power play off of a Dave Nippard penalty, Birmingham fights back. They call a timeout, they drop the play they wanted, and while that play didn't work, it's an odd man rush to the front of the net Carson Rose gets the puck, beats Brent Moran five hole with 34 seconds to go in the hockey game. That sends us into overtime where Brian Moore takes a tripping penalty right off the faceoff. That was a tic-tac penalty and one that you probably would rather not see called in the course of a game that had been very lenient. It did not affect a rush. It didn't take away a scoring chance, but it certainly killed any Carolina momentum that was there. Birmingham had chances. Brent Moran stands tall. We go to the breakaway competition, and in the shootout, the lone goal scorer is Jake Papalardo. Austin Lotz goes 5-for-5, five five, stopping Reaper shooters. Birmingham takes the extra point. They split the series with the Fayetteville group here in the Sand Hills of North Carolina. And here's the thing. Yeah, this is a frustrating loss for the Carolina Reapers. Shootouts are nobody's favorite if you're a hockey fan that has played the game, especially if you've been a goaltender because it always feels like it's not really the game determining the game like you would have in football or basketball. It's it's a gimmick, and it's a fun gimmick. It's, a, it's one that will raise your blood pressure and get your heart pounding, but 
it's one of those things that if you're the Carolina Reapers, you want to brush that one off and you want to get prepared for the longest road trip by distance of the season with the Pensacola Ice Flyers, your next opponent on the road. Folks, we hope you enjoyed this one. It was a fun hockey game. It was a fun weekend series between Birmingham and the Fayetteville Marksmen and the Carolina Reapers. The final score, one last time, the Birmingham Bulls 5, the Carolina Reapers 4 in the shootout. We thank you so, so much for joining us, and we hope you enjoyed this one as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Until next time, for all of us here with the Carolina Reapers, I'm Drew Blevins. Good night.